Hello, welcome on into another Monday Night Live with the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm Will. I'm Matt. Today we're jo joined by Juliet, uh, who has her own YouTube channel as well. Uh, we'll give her a chance here in just a couple seconds to uh, introduce herself and uh, plug her channel. In the meantime, Matt, let's go ahead and introduce everybody that's in the chat and say hello to people. All right. So we've got Bren Elliott in first tonight, which is Wheels. If you guys are ever on Discord ever, he's an awesome guy. His 15-year-old freaking Wild Turkey Spirit, which is amazing. Stuff he brought down to Austin. Oh, love uh, there it goes. Lovely uh, thing just went live on my phone. Oh, look, we even have one dislike, and it hasn't even started. It's my favorite. <laughs> what an asshole. All right. Anyway, so we got Killajolt, uh, Donald Rance, Dude, Matthias, uh, Mike Lisiak, Mark Goyne, uh, Christopher David, Elvis Presley, Travis Waller, Stellar Matrix, The Lynx Cat, Chad Wallace, Hot Buttery Rolls, awesome guy we met in Austin. Uh, of course, your, your producer, David. Uh, let's see here. Doug and Victoria C., Trav Wilson, Trey Coons, Donner Pasley, Patrick Cohen, the best garbage man ever. Pit Face Barbecue, our friend Brian, over making the awesome barbecue. Our, I got Captain Ben Stahl. Of course, your, your wife Sarah's in here. And Moose Chung. Let's see who else. We got Charles Ashworth, Karen B. Ford. Good to see you. I uh, see Jason Unsworth, Johnny Drum. Let's see, make sure I miss it. Brian Walsh, Tech 187, Wesley Gaskins. Oh, good to see somebody new in here. I've not seen you before. Awesome. Trey, our Troy's in here as well. Let's see, ADHD Fishing, Jason the Mass and Drum. All right, that's everybody that's in there for us. So we got 40 right shot. Awesome. All right, so Julia, introduce yourself and talk about your channel so everybody knows who you are and we'll get into it. Well, all right. Well, hey, y'all. I am Juliette Miranda, and I host the Unwritable Rant podcast, and I have my bourbon-soaked YouTube channel. Uh, every week, I do a live video where we hang out and tell stories and drink, and really, it's just, it's all about the bourbon and storytelling. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that, that's for sure. Mm. Nothing better than whiskey and storytelling, that's, which is really, truly all of that whiskey is about in the reality in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. I love how all great stories sort of start in bars. Pretty much. You can't go wrong with that. That's for sure. All right. So tonight we decided to do top 10 bourbons. I think in my case it might be like 15, but you know, whatever. <laughs> we, we just get around to, you know, here we just, we like to just drink a bunch of different samples and put out bottles and have a good time. So I guess Juliet, we'll let, since you're the guest, we'll let you uh, go first. What is I guess you either it doesn't mean any particular order, just whatever you want, whatever you want to drink on at the moment, whatever. Okay. Works, so just go from there. Uh, so when we're talking top 10, what I did was pick the bourbons that I go to the most, like not the special releases, not the, you know, crazy expensive bottles. This is just the stuff kind of like I just reach for when I'm at the store and I want something to drink that I really enjoy. Uh, and tonight I'm actually, I'm starting with something and I suppose this is contradictory, but I'm drinking IW Harper 15 mm. and I'm loving it, loving it hardcore. It's a little funky, um, but it's just got kind of a, a different sort of flavor. It's almost like a really good cheese in a way. <laughs> uh, so I am, I am loving this stuff and I don't think this bottle is going to last very long. Yeah. You don't oh, see me really talking about that IW Harper 15. I've got one. It's, that's good stuff. Most of all. I like, don't really even know it exists, so I'm truly really excited to pull that one out. That's an awesome one. Yeah, it, you know, it, it popped up at the booze store the other day, and I saw it, and I was just like, whoa, you know, got to have this one. So uh, I think I'm going to be going back to this one quite a bit. Plus that old um, decanter style is awesome. Yeah, that yeah is isn't it beautiful? I mean, I just I love the texturing on it. I love the cork. It's just, it's so pretty. Just really, it looks really good on the bar, you know, not, not that that's a sign of a good whiskey or anything, but yeah. it is a bit of a bonus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Came. So I guess that's kind of like what I'm into right now, but okay. you know, every week we always have a fresh bottle of Larceny sitting in our bar it's like the greatest go-to bourbon for us ever. It's just, awesome. it's light, it's weeded, it's easy to drink, and it tastes like home. Hey, that works. I can understand that. That was, uh, for the long time, that was my starter whiskey for the evening, just kind of get the palate ready for anything else that I was going to throw at it. 
Yeah, it's really good for that. I, I always tell people, you know, if, if you're not a huge bourbon drinker, that's a really good one to go to to start with because it's just, it's so easy. So yeah. let's see. Um, beyond that, uh, well, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, you know. Well, yeah, <laughs> who I doesn't like that? that. That's, that's <laughs> amazing. Uh, um, and then my other one is Redemption Weeded. Um, it's so summary it's one of those like like uh earlier today i was talking with jason about how i feel like bourbon kind of has a seasonal feel to it and that just is a pure summer day you know bright full of corn lively really good um and since it's now autumn i am all over the old granddad 114 mm -hmm. uh the, the old forester 1920 um bookers because that's also got that really good like rich sort of autumn flavor um Russell's Reserve Tenure, it's another go-to for me. And I know it's a little, it's it's a little controversial sometimes, but I love Blanton's. I do. I mean, I know it's a little, you know, overhyped, but I just love that stuff. It is and it's good whiskey, but it's just like it you said, is. it is it is overhyped though. I would totally agree with you on that. Yeah, I mean, I it's it's one of those that if I'm at a bar, I will always order it because it's just it's consistent and I know what I'm getting with it. Uh, and I find that most of our Chicago bars all have it. I, for a long time, they didn't. And I feel like somebody just made an order and then shipped it out to all the bars now. So it's very accessible. Oh, well, that works. Yeah, because a lot of people, you know, yeah. I don't know if it's a problem there in Chicago or not. Uh, but yeah, like Blanton is almost impossible to get here unless you know somebody. Mm -hmm. it's, real far, it's just basically impossible. Says the guy with eight bottles. <laughs> sure. I don't want it yeah, all the but it, he's not wrong. Uh, the Blanton's is just really, really hard to find. My my restaurant gets three bottles a month. Like that's that's what that's they'll send it? us. We order. Wow. We can order it daily. We get three bottles a month. What oh. state are you in? Texas. Texas, huh? The issue with us is is that the DFW the allocation for Buffalo Trace from what I've been able to deduce the allocation for Buffalo Trace in DFW is the same as the allocation for Buffalo Trace in Corpus Christi, Texas, which is just kind of insanity. Um, we just have a huge market and they don't send us enough whiskey. That's ridiculous. Uh, I don't know that. Tragic. Yeah. yeah, and Bobby and Sam just joined us from my whiskey shoe wines. Happy birthday, Sam. I know it's tomorrow, but I want to say happy birthday while you're in here. Let's see. We got a bunch of people that joined in. I know Roscoe joined. Pete, my friend Pete joined. Trevor Wilson joined. Ice House. Well, it's Michelle Lynn's in here now. Johnny Drum. Richie Z. All right. So lots of people are joining. All right. So, Will, what do you want? I started with some E.H. Taylor, the bottled and bond. Uh, when this bottle empties, we buy a new one. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty sure. Yes. Uh, the bottle has already been purchased for this empty bottle um, because we don't let it go away. It's uh, it's something that we we keep pretty standard in the house. So I'm um, I'm starting with that one. I mean, if we're gonna go with accessible, then there you go. always an everyday accessible one. That's my number two, man. Is uh the is the pot still Balcones bourbon? Oh, so nice. That one's good, and then we'll go into the more unaccessible ones later this evening. <laughs> But it's a great choice. It's Thirty bucks can't go wrong with it. It's on their standard release now, so it's it's great stuff. Have you had those? Some, I don't know how much Balcones you've had before, Julia, or Texas whiskey in general. How much experience do you have? Uh, not a ton of it, I'm afraid. Oh, I've had uh, just a few that. selections, but yeah, no, no, no. I'm sure you can give me some good suggestions. Oh, oh no, no, no! After this is over, you just let Matt have your address, and he'll send you sample bottles. Ah, all right, sweet. You. Bring it on. We'll have you back on, and we'll have a Texas whiskey night with you. Yeah, I'll send you like three, four different Texas whiskeys, and we can go from there. Wow! All right, I am in. Game on. Oh, yeah, I can't can't go wrong with this stuff. It's so rich and um, just nice. You know, it, it takes a little while to mm -hmm. oxidize. Once you open it up, it really opens up nicely. It's yeah. great stuff. This is my uh, third bottle of of this <laughs> whiskey, and it's only it only came out like a month and a half, two months ago. Like I, it, again, once it's gone, it, I ask for yeah. one because it's, uh, I like it a lot. I love your bars. Seriously. I mean, you know, we, we try to stock our bar, but we just seem to drink our way through it. Uh, 
in order to create this, um, my wife had to instill um, some rules for me of what I can drink and when. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> How no. does that work out? <laughs> uh, it, it works well. I follow rules. I'm good. Um, oh. We set up price points for things that you know we drink on a daily basis, and then we set up price mm -hmm. points for things that we drink on the weekends, and price points sure. for things that we drink every other weekend. Splurge, uh, and, yeah. so that the more expensive things last a little bit longer. I get it. Yeah. Uh, Ed from the Rock Out Review just joined us in. How's it going, Ed? Good thing, Ed. So somebody donated us an Uncle Nearest that actually tastes good. I'm sending Ooh. you the crappy bottle because almost at least the sample, and if you really hate it, I'll send you the rest of the bottle because it's horrible. Yeah. You know, that's so odd. I was just talking with Jason about this from Mash and Drum, and he was saying that he'd had a couple of bad batches of it, too. Yeah. And I haven't yet. I've had uh, two bottles of the, what is it, the 1856? Um, yes. And I had the green label, and uh, they were all excellent. Yeah, I've had two bottles that were really good and two that were absolutely god-awful. Wow, it's fascinating. Horrible inconsistency on their problem. So, you know, who knows, yeah, but they, they need to fix that immediately. Yeah, that's a bummer I because I feel like they're they're really strong. I feel like, yeah, if, if they address that, I think that would be huge. Because, I mean, I would send this out to every to all the other whiskey gyms and tell me I'm not wrong. This stuff is just god awful. It's, it's horrible. Bummer. And like I said, I found another bottle. I'm assuming same batch. It was just as bad. So I don't know. But the other ones were really good. That's why I bought it in the first place. And well, this one's good. And the second one's just horrible. So wow. don't replace some of the good ones. So I was glad to have that happen in Austin. So that was always well, a big it happens. Yeah, it, it's like I'll, I'll go back and revisit some whiskeys that I loved back when I just first started getting into them. And I taste them now. And I'm like, oh, what was I thinking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stranahan's yellow label for me on that one. <laughs> I, I loved it. And now I go back to it and I'm like, Oh God, it's so funky and weird. I don't know how uh -huh. I loved it, but yeah, I, I definitely can understand that. Yeah, it happens. Uh, Hey Andy, Andy came in, Jason Boosie's in now. All right. Oh yeah. I just, I can't, Ooh, that's a bad one. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like TX bourbon here too, which is terrible. But, oh, yeah. Yeah. I've heard about that, too. I had a sip of it and I was not thrilled. No. Well, apparently. So I talked to their master distiller maybe, I don't know, a month or two ago. And he admitted that uh, there were some serious problems with the distillery then that shouldn't buy anything that wasn't produced before this May. Because anything prior to that is just basically garbage. Oh, and God, I guess he okay. said he was really glad they got. They, so I guess the owners just had a released product. And thankfully, they sold here about a month ago. And uh, so now he says he can actually experiment and make it better. So he had some single barrel I tried that was actually significantly better than what they've been producing. So I'm hoping, and he advised to come out and test his experiments. So I'm really hoping it gets better, especially since it's fairly close to where we live. It's disappointing to hear that from them. Yeah. Uh, but at least they admit it was bad. So. <laughs> well, at least they know. I mean, they're not putting it out going, hey, this is the greatest stuff ever. Yeah, yeah exactly. That would be the worst. <laughs> <laughs> that would be tragic. <laughs> They tried to sell it that way originally, but my palate's my, it's so bad. My I gave my mom in a in a, uh, in a diet coke and bourbon, and she's like, "You ruined the diet coke. It was so bad." Oh, now that's like the ultimate low. Oh, it that's is. a bummer. And she'll drink like old crow and crap and say it's fine. <laughs> okay, so I mean, low standards here, and or or Seagram Seven or whatever. She's like, "It's fine. This stuff just ruined it. Like it's so bad." <laughs> Uh, you know, it is what it is. All right. So I guess I'll we'll move on to the next one then. Sure. All right. So I'll just go with, uh, so this is the rather much harder to obtain Balcones. So I think I'm going to do attainable and unattainable. I think it's a good way to do this tonight. So this is their um, cast strength Texas blue corn bourbon, which this is a 10th anniversary of 60.5%. So, yes, yeah, it's basically this but one, but amped up to the 10th degree, and it's 100% blue corn, and it's freaking awesome. Hey, Eric. Evanson's in. He gave us quite a few. He gave us a few bottles in Austin. It was awesome what he gave us. I'm really excited. Did you say that was blue corn? Yes. 100%. You know, 
I love that we have a distillery out here called Whiskey Acres. It's a uh, seed to spirit, and they're actually growing their own blue corn harvest and using it in their uh, bourbon. So it's, it's. Uh, I had a tasting of it aged at two years and at three years. It's, it's really, really good. Yeah, that sounds good. I can't wait to try that one. That's for sure. That's a that's a great way to to run your company. Seed to glass. That's. Definitely. Oh yeah. That's These guys are. They don't now they don't grow their own though. That's pretty amazing. They're growing their own. Yeah. They uh they're on a farm out in DeKalb, Illinois. So they do their own corn okay. and they also have their own rye crop that they're growing. Uh, and their rye is really interesting. It's um they actually make it for people who don't necessarily like rye, so it has a softer okay. sort of taste to it. Uh really just cool place, cool people doing really interesting things. Do you know what kind of rye they're using by chance offhand? Uh you know, um, I, I I did a video on it. Um, I honestly, off the top of my head, I don't remember. Right, I but he that one. he really that. went in deep. Yeah, I, I spent a whole day at the distillery with them, and he went in deep on the rye. So That's awesome. Yeah, real big fan of Balcona's rye as well because it's the same thing. It's not meant for like regular rye drinkers. It's all chocolatey. Mm. It's coffee and espresso, and it's beautiful. Oh, it sounds really good. It's really good. Yeah, nice. I'll, I'll probably have to include you a Balcona's box and then twenty four other Texas whiskeys. It's probably <laughs> easier way to do this. <laughs> Yeah, right. Balcones, there's so out. many good Balcones. 20 ones something different ones now. It's crazy. So, yes. Uh, yes, Kat, she's in Illinois. I am. And the distillery is called Whiskey Acres, and it's in DeKalb, Illinois. Uh, it's west of Chicago. So, probably about an hour and 20 just outside of Chicago. Okay. So, how'd you find those guys in the first place, anyway? They actually found me. They were fans of my podcast awesome. and uh, they reached out because I do a bourbon tasting at the start of the show and they reached out and said, hey, you know, we're, we're right down the road from you. Why don't you come on down and, you know, be a distiller for the day? So, you know, went out there and hung out and got to know them. And it's just it's such a beautiful place. Just a real old family run establishment. Great people. Awesome. Sounds exciting. I wish I was where you were, Donald. Can you highlight that comment? Yeah, I'm highlight that was comment. So, Seriously. Donald, so the availability of bourbon, my local LCBO, he's up in Canada, by the way, up in Ontario. Oh. 114 bottles of Eagle Rare 10, 500 bottles of Wello 107, 120 bottles of Blanton's. Oh my gosh, that's insane. <laughs> Donald, send us the love, man. We're sending them all of our good bourbon and they send none of us their good Canadian whiskey. Yeah, exactly. None We're getting hosed. Yeah, that is not fair. That is that is not very Canadian of you. No. Yeah, Kat says his wife is from Sycamore, Illinois. I don't know if that's close to where Oh, that's sure. Going. Yeah, yeah. I know exactly where that is. Yeah, we're practically... Well, we're not neighbors, but I'm, I'm familiar with where they are. I'm pouring another one of my go-tos. Uh, Old Forester oh, 100, Forrester. the signature. Nice. Nice choice. Uh, I replaced this on the list from Henry McKenna, the bottled and bond that we <laughs> used to buy. Because, you know, that went up in price ridiculously. And... True. um it's a lot harder to find and this is just as good for the same price point so yeah <laughs> cheers to that mm -hmm. yeah the, the price increase from a ken of 10 totally not worth it mm. i love the juice i really do but not for an extra not the money for yeah same with the the 107 going up another you know 25 to 20 to 25 depending where you're in as well for the weller it's just like Cool. Yeah, we picked up we picked up this bottle of Weller 107, I think, for $29.99. Yeah, and the new one's fifth. Yeah. It's just and for $29.99, it's a freaking amazing bourbon. Yeah, yeah. You th 50? there's always that threshold where you know it's too much. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we added a cork and a gold seal. Uh 20 bucks more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, not at all. I actually like the screw top better. <laughs> Won't rot on you, I'll tell you that. Right. <laughs> and it's more fitting for what it is. I mean, like I hate to be like that, but it's not Agreed. it's not it's not a super fancy thing. It's not and we're I'm gonna get into some of those. I have I have mm, some bourbons that I think are, you know, really worth the price point, but mm -hmm. you know, no. I, oh, look what Jason said. So Jason, which is where you were on with earlier, I guess he was on your show, says that McKenna is so consistent, McKenna will be a small batch at some point soon. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, and they're having to put out so much now uh, yeah. that they're they're they are inconsistent because 
before it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't that inconsistent up until recently. No, ain't my older bottles are way better than the newer stuff. Yeah. That seems to be the case with so much now. I think the demand for whiskey and everybody's, you know, all these whiskey bars cropping up everywhere. It's kind of yeah. killing the, you know, the nuanced small batches. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. It's it's nuts. Yeah, you, you almost have to go to actual single barrels and taste the single barrel prior to buying it or <laughs> you know it's going to be any good. Right. It's bad. Yeah. It used to be single barrel. It's going to be good. Now it's like, maybe. Yeah, you just don't know. I'd like to hear some answers in the chat from this one. Um Let's see. D.H. Silv wrote, uh, is Blanton's more consistent than McKenna 10? Uh, I, I would say yes. The bottles of Blanton's that I've opened yeah, and tried, I, I would say absolutely. They are, stay very, very consistent to one another, mm -hmm. uh, at least in my area, the ones that I get. Yeah, I've, I've never had a bad bottle of Blanton's. No, or even like an off bottle of Blanton's. One yeah. that looks like, you know, we have off bottles of Booker's, right? Ones that are just kind of like, oh, this is mm -hmm. way different. You don't have that with Blanton's. They're all Blanton's. Exactly. Man, Eric says he's never had Blanton's. Oh, my Man, God. Yeah. Next year, Eric, I promise to have a bottle down at a... At Seriously. Like, for sure. I'll bring a full bottle. We can we can drink that. All I care is I keep the horse. I don't care about the bottle. I know. I'm so close to spelling it out. I'm I missing an N. Which N? <laughs> the first one. The first one. Yeah, yeah. I need the second one. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I've got uh, mine are just full bottles. I have all the horses. I just I don't drink it that often. Really, I just have blends for other people. I pretty much never drink blends. To be real honest with you, it's just it is I it's, the in the barrel. I drink that all the time. It's, mm. mm -hmm. it's a good guest bourbon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Everybody's ooh, I want to get that. Well, oh, that was me. I, I spent four years trying to search for my first bottle of Blanton's before I finally found one. Four years. Four wow. years. Whoa, that's Four insane! Years. Like they, we get, we get nothing here. It's, uh, it's absolute insanity. Wow. I also didn't know the right places to look or the right way to look. Mm. Um, when I found that out, I instantly found my bottle. But uh, yeah, yeah, you just got to get in good with that one liquor store guy. You know, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. I didn't yeah. know that. I didn't know that that's the way to do it. Yeah, I'm single handedly funding our liquor store guy's kids through college. I think. God. I feel you on that one. Yeah. Yeah. No, no doubt in my mind, unfortunately. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was this? It? Duran Van, thank you, man. Says, you start bring, I'll start that bottle list for next year right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, Eric, I didn't have the Blanton's here this year. I, I had, I'll bring it next year for you. Problem solved. Yeah. If I'd known that, I would have brought it this year, though. I didn't know you, you hadn't had it. So, it, it, it is surprising to have not had it, but I will definitely bring it for sure. Well, I mean, again, it's just, it's, it's hard to hey, find. For some people. Find. Hey, Eric, wait, he's up. <laughs> <Top 10. laughs> that, might get some, that might get some views. Uh, here we go. I like that. It's pretty funny. So Eric says, everybody loves top 10 list. He thinks I'm doing top 10 list, top 10 whiskeys drink when shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a good, that's probably a good Halloween episode one. Like, the zombie apocalypse. What he drink? Oh my god, I love that. <laughs> uh, yeah, those, those are the ones you don't even put in a glass, you know. Yeah, you're just chugging it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know that glyph is, I'm sure, at the top of Eric's list. <laughs> I know how she hates that one. It's right next to Johnny Walker Red and Johnny Walker White Walker. Mm. Bad whiskeys. Mm, okay. Well, I'm jumping up in proof now. Uh, we were at 100. We want to just step it up incrementally, I think, maybe. Let's see. Keep the details. Yeah, I, I threw a uh, Elmer T. Lee onto the bar, which was a store pick Elmer T. Lee. I don't think it lasted very long. It disappeared, but that's okay. That's what it was for. Ben's like, you should have kept it a secret. <laughs> like, Sorry. I just threw it out there, figured who would want it would try it. Yeah, it didn't make it. Not really a surprise. So I'm going with my next uh, Weller Antique 107. Uh, again, I put this on for price point versus what I what 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 she got this for um, versus you know what's in the glass. I, I'm not 100 percent on the new price point. Uh, I, I I really don't know. It's 50 bucks about that, but you know it is what it is. Oh Malort, have you ever had Malort, Julia? You ever had the lovely experience for that? No, no, I have not, not had that. Chicago, I'm surprised you haven't had that. 
I, you know, and I, I don't, I don't even know why I haven't. It's, uh, it's just never presented itself to me. Matt, please don't send her that. I'm not gonna send don't you do any. Don't do oh that. come it's, on! It's, it's, it's horrible. I'll send you some if you really want to try. Well, okay, now, now I, I need to, I need a like a gauge of horrible. What makes it just so horrible? What's it's very, what's very the... bitter. Okay. And just nasty flavors in it. Uh, nasty. Pine saw, lemon, lemon pledge pine saw. Um, okay. Like drinking liquid cleaner. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just <laughs> off in every way. Malort. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's not whiskey. The funny joke here is when we have new people come to our house. I run a, the whiskey when we have our whiskey events here. Is we get the new people to try Malort every time. Oh, that's cruel. It's really funny though. <laughs> they got me to try it twice. Well, so what do you do? You present it to them as something like, okay, here, give this a try. Like, no, do everything it's else. The worst thing ever. You okay. Should try it. Okay. It, it depends on who gives it to them. Some people are saying, as, here's a great new whiskey. You need to try this. And other people are like, here's some horrible crap and you'll drink it anyway. <laughs> but the way it was presented to me was you don't know what zero is until you've tried this. So you don't know how to base your one to 100 scale if you don't have zero. Makes sense. And, uh, that, that was zero. Wow. All right. Well, that's, uh, that's hardcore. Yeah. It's, it's pretty god awful, but yeah. And funny thing is, it originates in Chicago. That's why it's kind of funny you hadn't had it. Yeah, you know, I've heard of it, and I just haven't had the opportunity. But now that I know, it's so you know, yeah, they, <laughs> appalling. What, what the uh, the Malort face? Wow, it's okay. it's, it's, it's it's face contorting. It's pretty god. Fun. Ed, Ed would right. probably love it though. Ed, with, from Rock Gut, I know Ed's gotta love the Malort. <laughs> Ed just said, "Okay, I'm back." It's like we we summoned him by talking about Malort in a time. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with Dustin's comment. It's kind of like when a guy smells something, gags, and says, "Dude, smell this." Ooh, I know <laughs> yeah. you still have to like share that, the misery. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's funny. Oh yeah, that white corn brand. Yeah, that uh, Mexican whiskey. I forget what it's called, but yeah, we're gonna have to review that. Oh, it's not great. Uh, it's, ouch! It's, it's gonna be a rough one. I tried it again on a fresh palate last night. Yeah, it's pretty bad. But we'll do it for science because why not? Oh, you're good men. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it is what it is. But, oh, well, so let's see. What should we move? Well, if you're going to do that, like, I was like, it's not going to be in order. If you're going to drink Weller, I might as well do William Relu Weller because there's not there much left in there. But oh, you are here. This is definitely probably top three bourbons for me of all time. Wow. I love this stuff. Yeah, out of the BTAC release, every single year, the William LaRue is always my favorite. Mm -hmm. It's got that big, powerful punch, that sweet wheat. Uh, yeah, that's I like that over Pappy every single time. Yeah, that's one of the ones we just don't get out here. I have been trying to hunt down a bottle, and I can't get my hands on one. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that one. I haven't. I haven't actually gotten my hands on that one either, but yeah, uh, the the restaurant I work at gets it, and it's uh, it's it's a good dram every year. Nice. Yeah, it's it's definitely a dream whiskey. I've never had a bad one, that's for sure. Trevor Wilson is the best whiskey juice he's ever put in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's saying something. Hundred degrees, yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. So that's a good question from Brandon. Wants to know. Where will we rank that 15-year Kentucky Sparity broad? That was good stuff. That stuff was really oh, good. Oh, that is good stuff right there. Yeah, yeah I'd never had a 15-year one, that's for sure. That thing was that's pretty up there. I wouldn't the new George Chief Stag's only 119. For what? Andy, uh Andy Mancan says thoughts on new GTS being 119. Oh, it's actually 116.4. Really? Yeah, it's really low this year. Very, very low. Wow. Oh, look, Pete, Pete uh, McNeil's in here. And he says he's way too drunk for this, but he'll try. Well, that's good, Pete. That should, be, that should make this real entertaining for you then. Or <laughs> <laughs> real entertaining for us. Keep writing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, this 107 is good. Yeah, this is magic. This is the first VTAC I ever owned. It was really well or lucked out in a lottery on it. Yep. Because I, I went and called the guy. I said, which one should I get? He's like, get that one. Get that one. Th then he proceeded to come over and it's like, well, if I give you double the money, can I have it? No. 
<laughs> oh, the MSRP is 119. Oh, oh okay, okay. That's different. That's All different. right. Uh, I don't hate that. Yeah, it's okay. 119, I'm okay with. Oh crap! You had Ben. You had a you had the hazmat stag on Saturday. Nice. The one forty four. Not had that one. You had that one at all, Juliet? No, I, I have not. That, one. that sounds amazing. Yeah, I'm jealous. And I opened that Jay Henry um, and got some first impressions of it, mostly just to kind of take the neck pour out. So oh, yeah. we do the uh, review on it. Uh, we won't be pouring out of the neck. Um, so I've taken two drams out of the Jay Henry seven year old. Yeah, I'll have to come get some of that and drink that for before we review just to see what I think, and then we'll yeah, pour, write some notes and all that. Plus, we got to compare it to that five year, so that'll yeah. be fun. Yep, 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 yep. Oh yeah, but yeah, I think that that fifteen year turkey, I'd say that's probably top twenty though. That's pretty damn good. Juliet, are there any yeah. more bourbons you want to mention before I pull out my next? Uh, yeah, you know, I kind of, I wanted to get your thoughts on, uh, barrel bourbon. Oh, I love barrel bourbon. I, I thought, am right over my ear. You can see one, right there. which, which, uh, which batch is it? Uh, that's just a single barrel. Oh, nice. Okay. That my wife happened to pick up nice. uh, and I don't want to say out loud the, the version of barrel that we really love because then everybody will want it and go get <laughs> it. And yeah. <laughs> and then it'll go up in price and I won't be able to find another bottle and I already have two, but I want more. So I understand. We well, love I, barrel bourbon and some of their releases are good. Some of their, <laughs> 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 I will. I, okay. So I will say hands down, my favorite was batch 11, just mm. solid all around. It was yeah. just full of carnival flavors. It was like popcorn and cherries. It was beautiful. Um, I have the 20 now. I haven't cracked into it yet, but I'm very excited to. Yeah, I do love Barrel. Barrel, Everything I've ever had from Barrel is pretty damn good. I, I know. They're, they're just, they're, they're, it's fascinating to me the way that they come up with all of these different batches. I think they're doing just amazing work. Yeah, especially since everyone is different, it makes it actually really exciting. So you yeah. never get yeah. that time, which is really cool. Yeah. I've got a few different ones. I know like the Dovetail, obviously I know it's not a bourbon, but it's really good. And the New Year was good. The Infinity's good. The Rye's good. Even this one that just says whiskey on it, this is a blended whiskey. Is really good. Yeah, they're just they're they're so consistent and solid in what they do. I uh, every time I see a new batch, I'm ready for it because I'm I know that I'm going to get something good out of it. Definitely. Oh, and I I'm, I'm happy to hear that you're saying that too because I've I've found I've, every bottle of barrel that we've picked up so far, picked up so far. Uh, has been just really, really good. Uh, so I, I didn't know if that was just a luck of the draw or, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it's got, when I first started seeing the bottles, uh, I didn't really know anything about it. And I kind of thought, I, I was very skeptical of it because there's no information really. And, you know, it, it seemed like it could be a risk because they are a little pricey, I think. But yeah. once you get in there, they're just, they're so good. Definitely. Oh, Brad from... Uh... Cat strength is in here. He's a, he's a demigod and an amazing man with the awesome samples that he let me take after the bastard's ball. Oh. So I'm hoping he enjoys the ones that I just gave to him. So it's good stuff for sure. Yeah. It sounds like you guys had so much fun. I cannot wait to do it next year. Seriously. Uh, it sounds like such a cool time. It was a, it was I, I will make sure to get Emma, your email information to get you on uh, the list to make yeah, sure you can invite. Definitely. Patreon. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I would absolutely love that because it just uh, everybody I've been talking to has just been raving and talking about how much fun they had. So it's uh, it seems like a really cool event. Yeah, it's just the whole the whole freaking weekend was just un was one amazing thing after another. It just started mm -hmm. with the barrel pick, you know, all the channels over at Iron Root, which is heck, I'm forward to mention that. We actually did a barrel pick of this Harbinger. Now this this is not it. It's not bottled yet. We picked this last Friday between all the channels. Um, so Robert and Jonathan oh. were kind enough to take us out to Salt Lake Barbecue and have everybody uh, pick between four different barrels and it was delicious. Oh, and, wow. Speaking of Harbinger, uh, that's on my list. Uh, I'm a I'm a big, big fan uh, of all things Iron Root. Uh, their Harbinger, the Icarus, the, I mean, all of them, they're all just delicious. They have a five-year coming out very, very soon. Uh, it'll be a distillery-only release, but we had a sneak peek at it and it was epic. Uh, I'm really exciting to having a bottle of that excited to have a bottle of that. 
Yeah, that's one I've never had. So it, it's just, it, oh, that sounds good. It, it'll be in the uh, package. It'll be in your care package. Excellent. Wow. <laughs> It's it's fantastic. Hey, Bill the Whiskey Dixon, how's it going? All right. Just want to pour some Harbinger just because it's so freaking good. And we're actually good friends with the distillers up there too, so that doesn't hurt. No, that never hurts. So we uh yeah, we'll be up there people, the 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 on November second. So if anybody's in town and wants to go to that, just remember it's November second, so it's gonna be a good time. Oh yeah, it's so good. Yeah, so Texas bourbon is so vastly different than Kentucky bourbon. It's just younger, uh, different. Of course, this is different corn varieties. You got purple corn in here, and you got bloody mm -hmm. butcher corn. So it's just really good stuff. Wow, I'm anxious to start, you know, kind of diving into it and seeing how it goes. Yeah, especially if you like oh. your orange, you'll love it. And my uh, my producer is flagging me in the background. He says we're going to send you out some samples of that whiskey acre stuff as well. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. I'm excited about that one. Sounds really good though when you've told us about it. Yeah, you know, they're doing really interesting stuff. They had a um they, they called it a 5.5 grain uh because they had a blend of three different kinds of corn in it. Um just it, it really cool stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, I love stuff like I love all the different corn varietals and just different varietals in general really excite me as in the nerd and whiskey in me. Just when mm -hmm. you get excited about varietals of grains, it's it's problems that us whiskey nerds have. But oh, I, I, really I know. We're talking about that stuff a lot. I've certainly come a long way. And basically, I really, I credit Robert a lot for that, teaching me a ton about different corn varietals and other things. Yeah, I love the science of it. You know, when uh, I was down at the distillery, you know, they were like walking me through all the steps and everything. And I'd, I'd never seen it in up close like that. You know, you read about it, you see videos, but to see like the hands on science that goes into making the mash and, you know, fermenting oh, and everything and just that smell alone. Yeah. 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 It's so wild. The smell of corn being uh, fermented, like mm -hmm. once you have that in your in your sensory you know, memory bank, mm -hmm. you find it on young bourbon so quickly. Yeah. Like, it's like, whoa, okay. This didn't sit around for very long. Mm -hmm. This is, this is some young stuff. Uh, and, and that comes through really, really quickly, but you don't have that until you visit the distillery and actually smell that corn actually being fermented. Mm -hmm. That mashing process, man, it, it, that's something. Dram band wants us to review the IW Harper 15. So we'll, we will put that on the list to make sure that happens. Heard yeah, that. yeah, I'm a. <laughs> I might just polish off half this bottle tonight. That works. <laughs> Along with that, so if we're working, no judgment from our channel. Oh. Yeah, it's all right. I don't have to be up early in the morning. Perfect. I you bottled down one already tonight. Uh, oh. The E. H. Taylor. I actually had to drain Fair this down. one a little bit faster than normal. Uh, when we popped the top, like the first time we popped oh, the top, that's right, you broke it. this happened. Uh, uh, so this bottle has not lasted us, you know, a whole long time because I was worried about the seal and, you know, well, that's had, reasonable. Had to, yeah. Had, had, to, had to make it go quickly. No, no sacrifice. You know, it's okay. <laughs> you power through. All right. So Brandon has a question for you. It says, what are your preferences? Let's see. What's your preference as both of us can say out the La Quinta you'll be placed to try a lot of different whiskey. So I guess what's your preference is that you want us to bring for La Quinta. I guess that's what Brandon wants to know. And everybody brings stuff. So we had well over 200 bottles in that bar at La Quinta. It was, it was nuts. Whoa. And a lot of it was like really and About 115 stuff. people. Oh yeah. my gosh. Wow. That's overwhelming. I don't even know where to go with. All well, and that's, that's the thing. You're bar shop. You're just going to stand there and stare. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. God, what do you do now? Um, it's yeah. like the first time people go into the whiskey vault. You just, you're, mm -hmm. you're standing there looking at, you know, almost 2000 whiskeys going, uh, but in the, but I, which one should I drink? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, wow. That's overwhelming. That's crazy. Yeah, exactly. Like Ben Stahl says best bar in Austin those nights. No doubt in my mind about that. <laughs> 200 bottles of whiskey being poured for free. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that's, a, um, that's a good point too. It was Johnny awesome. Drum says what happened. The, the same thing happened to his E. H. Taylor. I, I even I, I have a habit of wetting my wetting my cork pretty constantly because um, Matt has had issues with cork for a long time and he gets so mad about it and he's ranted about it so many times. I I just have a habit of wetting the cork 
you know, pretty consistently. And it's still, I just, mm -hmm. I can't believe that that it just popped like that. Yeah. Let's see, Travis Wald would like to know if you Julie, have been to Cedar Ridge at all yet in Iowa. Have you been there by chance? No, no, I haven't. Although uh, we actually have uh, friends out in that area who've been trying to get us to come out there and using that as the lore. So you should go. They're making great stuff. Travis has actually sent us a tremendous amount of yeah. uh, bottles of Cedar Ridge, and and every one that we've tasted has been very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, good most of the time, but interesting if nothing else. Yeah, it, it sounds like it would be really good. Yeah, you, you, you won't be sad. And it's a beautiful property from what I've seen on their website. It looks absolutely beautiful. And they have a winery there, too. So, Oh, really? Yeah, so oh. it looks it's really, really pretty. Right. So if you just went there for the pretty, that would be good enough alone as far as the property goes. <laughs> uh, but the whiskey happens to also be really good, so that's a big selling point. That's something. Yeah, <laughs> that helps. <laughs> yeah, uh, we have up in Michigan, there's the Journeyman Distillery. Uh, I don't know if you guys have had them before. Fantastic um, stuff. The, you know, yeah, I really like some of the stuff that they're doing. I love their Featherbone Rye and uh, mm -hmm. their Buggy Weep, uh, Buggy Whip Weeded. Um, mm -hmm. But beyond that, they do a killer gin of all things. No, really? I have not had their gin. Yeah, uh, Black Hearts Gin. It is outstanding. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, I, I like their uh, whips, corsets, and whiskey. That's my favorite one they make. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it isn't that just a great name? They do it is a, a fantastic um, name. They do a barbecue every year uh, themed after that, which is just a blast. That's awesome. Yeah. I can only imagine how that goes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. you Believe me, everything you're imagining is accurate. <laughs> yeah. Steve A agrees. That's that's a great one for sure. Wow. That's that oh. is <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, it's it's awesome. We have friends who have a cabin up in Michigan, and they're literally you know two or three miles away from the distillery. So uh, nice. we've spent a great deal of time there. And uh, totally random, uh, but they also have a kitchen there, and they make the greatest pork rinds ever. Hmm. Awesome. Yeah, I, I have I have a thing for pork rinds. So <laughs> yeah, if there's really good, there's nothing better than a lot of really good pork rinds. What's it say? Yes, that that's true. There was a gin there that was seventy eight percent ABV. Holy wow! Hey, Trev, which which gin was that? I wonder if that's the one that's the, that when the back went home with the back of Captain's car or not. I don't know. That's if it was that Copper and Kings or it's a different gin. But if that if there's still that gin left, I want to try that. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. Oh, yeah, speak yeah, because uh, wow. I, <laughs> Not many things I've had that high besides Everclear, but that does does that does that really count? Do you guys ever drink absinthe? I do. I do like absinthe. It's good stuff. I don't yeah. know. I tried absinthe in my later years. I tried it when I was very young, uh, but I don't know that I've actually had gone back to it. I think that's probably my second favorite drink outside of bourbon. I love absinthe. Yeah. Yeah, I like mezcal. That's probably mm. my number two. Mm -hmm. And barrel-aged tequilas. Nice old tequilas. Are oh, all yeah. That's good stuff. I like yeah. barrel-aged gins a lot. There have some, been some really good barrel-aged gins that I've had, too. Highly malted barley. So Donald wants to know, are there any high malted barley content bourbons that you can think of? Uh, high barley content? Beyond the 10, usually? Huh. <sighs> Not as 13 beyond the 10. Arrows. Um, um, Herman Marshall, a local distillery in this area does, uh, something like 78%, 22% on all of his products. Wow. Uh, so it's 78% corn, 22% malted barley or 78% rye, 22% malted barley. Oh, um, it said there's a 30% barley old elk makes. Ooh, I like old okay. elk. Old elk is good. Oh, Okay. Yeah. I can't think of a lot of yeah. distilleries that are using high barley, high barley. bourbon. No, no, they should. It's a, it's a fun combo. Especially with some of these uh, barley varietals, if you can get into that too, you know, mm -hmm. besides mm -hmm. two row. Some of my favorite mixes are, you know, big, powerful, uh, high ABV bourbons with, you know, malted, uh, malted, uh, Isla scotches. So. Hmm. Agree on that. Like, Icarus. Yeah, right. I mean, 
you know, yeah, I've, I've heard that. I'm not, uh, I'm not as well versed in scotch as, uh, a lot of people it's something that i'm starting to slowly work my way into yeah now what kind of scotch do you like that you have had uh that i have had i think my favorite that i've had is the mccallan 15 uh just a very easy to drink you know uh and i just had uh, shoot i don't remember what it was it was um uh nadura is that right yes the glenn Glenn levitt Levitt nadura yeah i Mm. had that and i enjoyed that as well yeah now, have you had peated scotch before or not yet? Uh, wasn't the Nadora a very like high peated? There scotch? is a peated. Oh, there is a peated. So you had the peated version of it. Yeah, I had the peated version oh, of perfect. it, and I really oh, enjoyed I that. that. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Then you're in the right ballpark. It's okay. All good. It's it's only up from here then. <laughs> well, great. That's perfect for me. It's yeah, and that, like I said, that Nadura one's actually really good. That peated Nadura. So um, yeah, if you like that, then oh my gosh, the world of Isla will be an amazing place for you. <laughs> Excellent. That's oh, that's good. You need to. I'm gonna move on to some gobble gobble gobble. Oh, that works. I'm not really doing these in too particular of an order, except yeah. that the last one I'm gonna say is gonna be my favorite uh, bourbon, but yeah. rare breed. Uh, wild ah, turkey. nice. Can't go wrong with that one. Yeah, that is always a good choice. Now, yeah, it's a good, it's a good little pour. I guess this one is one one sixteen point eight. Yeah, Fred Minnick named it his best one. Now I still have a problem with that. I just I I can't see that one possibly actually being better than a Tax. It just there's such a distinct way that wild turkey tastes. You especially even though it doesn't matter if it's wine, he knows that was wild turkey as soon as he put it in his mouth. There's no way he doesn't. Right. So like I just I can't buy that that there wasn't some money exchanged. <laughs> plus plus there's the McKenna hole fiasco now and then. Northern Harvest and so many other that just don't make logical sense to be the best or what they are, unless there was money being passed around. I just I can't see that. Not happening. What, what am I being handed? New oh. <laughs> I'm being given a gift. Hang on. Yay! Gift whiskeys are good. That almost look like Hancock's. No, that's got to be that's, that's, that's quite the same type bottle. What is that one? It's the wild turkey. I am drinking the uh, Benny's Barrel Pick of mm-hmm. Wild Turkey Kentucky Spirit. Very nice. Oh, it is so from, that's the newer bottle. Of it that. is, yeah, and it's from Warehouse A. Okay, awesome. Of all my my Kentucky Spirit is still the old turkey bottle. I, I love that old bottle. I think the new one just looks a little too nondescript. And yeah, it's just like it's not going to sell. It's just from that. It's just kind of boring. It's just like the rare bottle. I'm like, why would you make it the same? I know. I know that makes no sense. I mean, now it's got almost the same shape as the Russell's. I, yeah. Yeah. It, I think it's a fan. Like my buddy Pete, who's, who's about to leave, he actually uses the spirit bottle as his infinity bottle. It's such a cool bottle. <laughs> so, and that's a fantastic infinity, by the way. I really enjoy what's in there currently. Of course, it changes all the time, but it's always good. Hey, Richie Z. All right. So. Yeah. All right. Well, first is always yummy. What should we move on to next? Okay. I, I one was a big favorite of mine for a while, too. I think I'm going to go with Four Roses. The Birthday Boys, Dixon Devon, Jamie Ferris, OESK, 10 year, four months. Jesus. This is like this is my favorite freaking barrel pick I've ever had. Nice by far, and I think this is actually better than the 17 LE. Um, but when Jason was here, uh, he gave me a sample of the new 19 LE. That thing's even better than this. That thing is killer. So if you get a chance to try that new 19 mm. which is limited edition, it is killer for sure. All right. <laughs> yeah, Brad, that's exactly how it goes. That was the problem. He's like, you really don't even go up to yourself. That's the problem. This is what happened to you too. If you go next year, I don't think I almost ever poured anything for myself at the bar. People just started going, Henry, you need to try this. You need to try that. Like, I don't even know what the hell I had at that point. That's a good way to get like, I have four drinks in my hand. Thank you for another. <laughs> As I try to slowly sip on my whiskey so I can make it. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty accurate. <laughs> Well, that's why you need pork rinds. Balances it all out. Mm. Bacon. There you go. Bacon, yeah. I like this plan. I've never done it with pork rinds. You should try that. I like it's, that plan. It's so good. I They're like the perfect balancing. And especially, if, uh, there's a place in New Orleans that we go uh, called Kingfish. And they have these um, 
uh, pork rinds that they do with molten pimento cheese. And it's probably the greatest bar food I've ever had. Uh, there's, there's just nothing like, you know, cheese and pork rinds. That does sound good. And it's good stuff. We had some cheese curds brought to the Oh, uh, ooh, official Wisconsin cheese curd. Official curds? Wisconsin they cheese curd. Ah, nice, nice. That's good stuff. You know, they sell those in gas stations in Wisconsin. That's insane. <laughs> like, we need those in our lives in Texas for sure, because they are really good. They are good. I know. You get that like sort of snappy, sort of like slick feel to them. Oh, they're awesome. That they are. Yeah. We finished. I know the first night there at Wakins, I finished, helped finish off that bag of those because they were awesome. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, like that Tomat and PX cast that Scott gave us. Oh, yeah, Eric, that thing was magical. Oh, it's so good. Hey, Joseph Brazos, how's it going? He's, he just came in. What are we doing in here, Joseph? What we always do, drinking whiskey. Drinking. And talking about it. And talking about it. Except for last week, which, we drank, which I drank water. <laughs> because we been drinking for basically, what, three days straight. And I was like, I'm done. <laughs> I didn't drink anything again until basically last night. So it's a week later, finally had another drink. You need a couple of days to wring your liver out just a little bit. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. That was, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't even imagine. Granted, most of it was sampled. It wasn't like having full drinks. I bet you we tried damn near 100. I mean, within mm. the three days we were there, it was insane. Wow. Oh, <laughs> I love it. It sounds like heaven. It was. Well, yeah. Plus, like, so, like, so after we went there, we went to the whiskey vault. Which I see, you know, there's like a couple thousand mm -hmm. in there to try. Then go back to La Quinta, and there's a ton of other crap the vault doesn't even have, which is even funnier. And it's just like, you know, there's like another couple hundred whiskeys, and then we did it again the second day. And then the wow. third day, we went over to Nickel City with uh, its Bourbonite for their meetup, and I had uh, the OFC for the first time, and that was amazing. Oh. That, and we had what, Four Roses 130th, we did Booker's 30th. What was the other one? Oh, and the new 2019 birthday. Mm hmm. So yeah, that was that was a wow. hell of a weekend, that's for sure. Oh my gosh, I love it. I'm so jealous. Don't yeah. be jealous. Come next year. I will. You will see me there next year. Hey, uh, I would like, like to pour myself some um, Booker's. I don't have a real nice bottle. I got choice. a little bottle, but I'm that a big man, small batch. Uh, I that was definitely my favorite, but no, I'm not going to pour that. I'm actually going to leave that one sitting back there. Is your yeah, for Sarah. Um, I'm actually getting into Sarah's list. Actually, most of this is Sarah's list. Mm. Um, as far as bourbons for the poppy household, that really is dictated by Sarah. Um, she sure. really does enjoy bourbon quite a bit more than I do. I'm an I'm an Isla Scotch guy. Ah. I want peat. I want medicinal. I want smoke. Um, so bourbon's not exactly my territory, but I do like bourbon. Uh, Booker's uh, was on both of our lists uh, and. Yeah, for good reasons. This is darn good stuff. Yeah, Booker's is such a potent bourbon. I love it. I mean, it, it's everything that I love about bourbon. I like that it's got that smooth vanilla sort of flavor to it, but it's still, you get that flavor punch. It's it's so perfect. Brian says, do the big man small batch. He's in here and he gave it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll you can, talk you to you sample okay. it. You have to. It, it's right, it's requested by the man who provided it, so I think you don't have a choice. Uh, and that's by I, far I the best right now. That, that, that Booker's is like head, neck and neck with George T. Stagg. That thing mm. is incredible. It, it really is. I, I, I liked the big man small batch more than Booker's 30th. Well, Trevor, you weren't converted mm. to Scotch or La Quinta because I wasn't in charge of pouring you the proper Scotch, Trevor. We will, we will have to have a separate session just for that. To, to, to fix you of your problem. <laughs> can't It can definitely be solved. Yeah, it takes time. Or I'll just send you a bunch of samples and make you come on the show, Trevor. That, that also, we can do that. So. <laughs> okay. Did so you just suck it down the wrong you, mic? You no, gonna live? As I took the sip, my wife comes busting out of the bedroom and gives me this evil stare because she knows <laughs> I'm about to pour something that she loves. And uh, I'm getting this um, this look right now. Yeah, I've given that look to my guy too. <laughs> I don't know that, but Brian, I don't know that I'm allowed to pour the last of this big man, even if you are going to refill the sample bottle. She's, she's you giving can smell me a look. It. Ouch. <laughs> you can smell it. 
I can smell it. How about one I pour of, it and I hand it to her? Yeah, one Would of you has to sleep tonight, so. <laughs> sure. Okay, I'm going to pour it and smell it and hand it to her. That'll be acceptable, right? There's um, just this tiny amount left in the Weagland, Karen. That's a good question for Brian. So Ben Stahl wants to know if Brian from Pit Face Barbecue, can, can he bring any barbecue for the next, yeah. Oh. We'll talk about it. If not, Brian, maybe we'll talk offline and figure something out for a few of us or something. So we'll talk about it and figure something out. I see uh, Jason Voorhees says, never marry someone who doesn't share your love of whiskey. And amen to that. Seriously, this is something you need to share. Yeah. Well, and I, I was I was getting one bottle a week or one bottle, you know, every time my bottle drained, I'd get another bottle. And that's, I, I had a whiskey budget or I had a whiskey uh, allocation that I was allowed to spend on whiskey per week, per month, per whatever. As soon as I got her into whiskey, it became our whiskey budget. And that <laughs> like, that was so much bigger than my whiskey allocation. Like, yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was way more than double my whiskey allocation. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I am all for getting your, uh, getting your significant other into the, the, the dram you enjoy. Well, and it's not just that. That's why uh, my husband is also my producer. So we go on these shoots. We were just at the Evan Williams distillery and he was sitting there and he's tasting everything along with me. And he, and I look at him and I go, you're just using me for the bourbon now, aren't you? <laughs> and he's like, yes. Oh. He's like, uh huh. <laughs> so my wife is with Scott. So we took her for last year for the first time at the vault. We knew she liked us, but she didn't really know what. And we found out she loves Isla Scotch. And, of course, her favorite is, you know, the world's head, most heavily peated scotch. And, you know, $200. That's the one she likes the most. Of course it is. Yeah, oh, we all like the shiny object. Like, seriously? She doesn't know what it costs. She just knows this one's really good. And that's the one she likes. Surprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we all know. <laughs> we can sense it. She secretly knew that must be it. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, Brad. You must yeah, you must find a cheaper whiskey your wife enjoys outside of Red Breast 21. <laughs> that's, that's an expensive one. Yeah, that's a hard one to replace every time she she drinks it all. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. Next year, Eric's bringing in a fibulator to look into just in case. <laughs> that's just gonna be of the overkill. Someone's gonna look that look at just all the whiskey on the bar and they're just gonna pass out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling that's gonna be me. Just like Whoa. It's, it's pretty nuts. It's it was just whiskey everywhere. Mm, yeah. Oh, I'm I'm sure I've seen that in my dreams. So yeah, pretty much. It, it's definitely the place that whiskey dreams are made of. That there's no doubt on that. It's it's something else. Oh, poor John says his wife will never be converted to whiskey. That's most unfortunate. Oh, well, more for him, right? That's right. More for you. See, you don't have to worry about her stealing it then. Problem solved. Oh, gosh, Ben. She only loves Macallan 25 and Rare Cast. Keep her on the Rare Cast. That Macallan 25 will make you go broke. <laughs> Jeez. It's only like $1,500, $1,600 more. The Rare Cast is up there too, man. It's 250 It's mm -hmm. if, if, if comparably speaking, 250 okay. to 1500 $1,600 is a cheaper budget yeah i mean still yeah. expensive but you know if you're gonna have her drink one thing you know oh she can nose though well nosing is a start oh yeah i'm pulling out uh stag jr which proof which one this is uh 63.95 percent abv 127.9 uh proof okay i've got a 129.5. Ooh. Ooh. Look at you two. <laughs> oh, I've also got this one, but it's not open yet. I've got the 132.3 as well. Damn. So. You guys and your bottles. That's crazy. I love it. <laughs> oh, oh Matt, Matt will whip out some bottles on you. <laughs> I have no doubt. Yeah, well, we should have to have you come down here. We could do a live shoot together here at the house and have oh, a blast. Oh, that sounds like a blast. I love it. Totally. That's what we should try to do next year. Try to have a bunch of the tubers come down here like a couple days before, do some stuff, and then go down to Austin together in, in a caravan. Oh, my gosh. That's a idea. great idea. I yeah. Think the greatest freaking weekend ever. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> I do love Stag Jr. You know, it's funny. You see people complain. It's not as good as George T. Stag. I'm like, well, yeah, it's only 50 bucks. Uh, we expect the other one's 100. 
Ah, oh, it's so good. Mm -mm -mm. But it will hurt. Yeah, somebody asked, I think it was Kill Joe, is that if you had any whiskey, go down the wrong pipe lately. Not lately, but one time I was drinking um, the Balcones rum, which comes in like 68.6, .6, something like that. That came back up. I burnt the actual top of my mouth and actually put a hole. Ooh. It was freaking horrible. Oh, that's painful. Yeah, like the doctor took a look at it. He's like, that is horribly burned. Like the skin's hanging off. It was bad. Oh, it was a, a horrible experiment. <laughs> I can imagine. I've never had that happen. No. It sounds terrifying. Oh, it was. I never had it. And it just came, just, just burnt the top of my mouth. It was horrible. And I couldn't tell oh my God. anything for like a couple of weeks. I didn't even know that was possible. I didn't either, but apparently it is. So it's really huh. high proof huh. alcohol. Jason You're never going to do that again. No. Jason Unsworth says Stag Jr. is great, but Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is the superior high proof bourbon, in my opinion. Ooh. Fine. Fine. We'll pour that too. This I have not the, had the barrel proof Elijah Craig. 517 62.1, and we'll compare. The only, the only Elijah I've had is this 94 proof, 94 proof. I've not had the uh, barrel proof yet. I'm, I'm looking oh forward my gosh. to trying that at some point. Over yeah. I've never had that over here? No. How many, things was just over there? How many things are over there? A couple thousand. That's, I mean, no, I haven't had that one. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. B five seventeen did win whiskey of the year from Whiskey Advocate. That's true. On the shelves there all the time, Andy. That's awesome. That is awesome. What's the price, Andy, up there on it? Yes, Trevor. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Trevor. Yeah, we'll definitely have you on if you want to come on, and we'll talk about Scotch. We'll have a good time. Whoa, 142. Ouch, that's insane. Yeah, for the Elijah Craig barrel proof. Donald, that's that's from Donald oh. Grant. So, Andy Man can says 70. No, I get it for 60 out here. Yeah, I think I pay, yeah, like beautiful 55 to 60 is what I usually oh, pay. Yeah. yeah, we don't have it regularly. I think we get it seasonally, but uh, it always pops up. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree. The ECPB is better. It's got it's got a little bit more better uh, mouthfeel, more complex. Both are really good, but I do. I mean, we may have to have an actual night of just comparing different stag batches to ECPB batches. Ooh, that would be a really good night. Mm. Let's we'll really drink a lot of water for that one, though. Let's pour the blind samples. I'm actually looking forward to match uh, to mash bill two blind sample night. I, oh yeah, that's gonna be fun. I want to do that soon. Mm hmm. It was fun filming all the episodes on it. That's for sure. It was. Uh, we. I actually just finished um, doing all of the edits for our last batch shooting, which was, Perfect. which was a whole bunch of bourbons. We did a lot of um, um, mash bill too. Yep. So, look forward to those coming out here pretty soon. Cool. Night, cat. Mm mm mm. Mm. Yeah, so, lovely. so good. Mm -hmm. So, Julia, which one do you prefer, the Stag Junior or the ECPB? Oh, oh, Elijah Craig, always. Yeah, yep. always. Yeah, I just I, there's just something about it. it. It was one of the first bourbons that I'd had. I, the barrel proof was, and somehow it's just always felt so right to me. I, I just I'm committed to it. Okay, so speaking of that, so what got you into bourbon? How long have you been drinking bourbon for? <laughs> um, well, it, it, there's two different answers to that. So the first time I had whiskey, I was 16, and Perfect. it was <laughs> it was in the company of a couple of really bad, long-haired guys who shouldn't have been giving giving it to me. But <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> uh, really, my interest in bourbon started probably about 10 years ago, just because I always enjoyed drinking Jack Daniels. And I started going, well, what else is there? There's got to be something else that I can drink that's going to be different. And it was Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. A friend gave it to me and said, give this a try. And I did. And I loved it. And I just started tasting and tasting and working my way through things. And my guy was with me the whole time. We started traveling to the uh, Bourbon Trail and visiting distilleries and just started building up a taste for it. Well, that works. 
that's awesome. Yeah, you know, and I love that. Uh, I mean, we were talking about how it helps to have, you know, your your partner involved in it, too. Sure. And I, I love that he and I are so into it because, you know, we, we both have different experiences tasting things. We both have different flavors that we like. So it kind of sure. it, it kind of gives me a different perspective when I hear him say that, you know, maybe he doesn't like something as much as I do. You know, we just we kind of balance each other out that way. Yeah, because my wife actually hates bourbon because it's too sweet for her. I, I get that. That's why I really prefer a higher rye bourbon because it isn't as sweet. She but. does too. Yeah, she likes it. She likes rye, and but she really loves peated scotch. That's by far her mm. love. She just bourbon's just way too sweet for her. So yeah, that that's why I'm not a huge fan. I, I was I wanted to ask you guys. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on these bourbons that are extra aged? in you know like the sherry casks and the rum casks and everything personally i mean i i'm kind of in a love-hate position there are a couple that i really love but most of the time i feel like it just kind of overpowers the bourbon well, it, it, or it makes, makes them too sweet yeah especially rum finished adding that sugar cane to an already sweet corn mm -hmm. uh, you know you think corn syrup then you think sugar cane like that's you're adding sweet on top of sweet. And right. that seems rather silly. If you're going to do a sherry cask though, if you could do something like an Oloroso or something a little bit, not, you know, ridiculously sweet, like Pedro Jimenez, the, the PX versions of sherry are really, really sweet. And, and sometimes that plus an Isla scotch makes a really fun combination. But mm -hmm. it, when you're dealing with a sweet bourbon already, adding something like a, like a PX sherry to it, usually I'm with you. I, it gets overly sweet, overly candied. Yeah, I really feel that way. Or I think on the opposite end of that, people are taking subpar bourbons and then giving them that extra finish to kind of cover the fact that it's not that good to begin with. Yeah. I think well, I mean, I'm all for improvement. I'm all for them taking something that they didn't think was right and, yeah. and trying to make it better. Yeah. But I, I feel like the next thing we're going to see is somebody aging bourbon in like a soy sauce cask or something, you know? Um, and, they did a stocky one, I know. All sorts of ridiculousness. Doesn't yeah. sound good, though. I was no. like, no, nah, I'm good. No. So someone asked here, Michael Campbell asked about Lone Wolf. I've heard of Lone Wolf, but that's one of the few Texas I've never actually had. I haven't heard uh, of Lone Wolf. I do want to try Lone Wolf, but I've never actually been able to find a bottle of it. So would love to try it though. If anybody knows where to get a bottle, that'd be great. Or wants to s donate it, more than happy to review it. But I've never actually had it. Uh, and, and then another guy was asking about Jason Voris was asking about Westward. We actually had an event with Westward uh, about a month ago. Westward was good. I liked Westward. Mm -hmm. It's a different um, single malt, totally different than Westland. Completely different because it's in Oregon. But yeah, it's good though. I, I do like Westward a lot. It's a different, unique whiskey. But yeah, Lone Wolf would love to try it, but have not had it yet. So, cannot comment. I just had a wine that was aged in a bourbon cask, and yeah. it was surprisingly good. I was very skeptical of it, and I wish I could remember the name of it. Yeah, I was wondering which one because I've had some that are really good that are done in bourbon yeah. cask wines. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. It was surprising. <sighs> it's one called what, Cooper and Thief or something like that. Cooper and Thief is the most uh, recognized. I like that one. Yeah. I like that one. I like that. Was it a thousand stories? That one's pretty good. Yep. Surprising. I don't know if it surprises anybody in this chat, but I get pushed those wines a lot. <laughs> uh, people try to put those in my face mm -hmm. quite a, quite a bit. Uh, Juliet, I don't know if you know, I'm a I'm a wine sommelier as my profession. Um, ah, I did and, not and know. Here I am on a whiskey channel talking about whiskey. So, wow, uh, crazy. Yeah. yeah. Oh my my. Producer has just brought it into me. It is Buckshack. I don't know that one. Where's that one? Uh, Buckshack uh, from Lake County, California. Hmm. Okay. Never heard of it or anything about it. Yeah. We uh, we picked it up on a whim at our local Benny's and uh, surprisingly good. Really good. Is that bottled black or is that the color of the whiskey? That is the color of it. Holy Beautiful. crap. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah, it's it's really, really good. Oh, Michael Campbell, thank you very much. That would be fantastic. Appreciate it. Yeah, that, wow. That looks like some of the Balcona stuff we get here that turns into coffee. Hell, looks like Lona. Yeah. Our <laughs> yeah, it's... Have somebody check your camera, Juliet. It's, I think you're frozen again. I can hear you just fine, but I don't see you moving anymore. She's moving fine, I man. Can... 
I see oh. you're moving. Okay, well, maybe I'm just silly. Not, you're moving fine for mine. <coughs> yeah, it looks like it's okay. Okay. I'll stop moving. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Hey, uh, Eric Wait says he's actually reviewed a couple wines in Bourbon Cast. Which ones did you review, Eric? I'd like to know just to so I can go look at your review and see what those ones those are. Are they on your wine channel, sir? Oh, I assume that. <laughs> I'm moving on to uh, what I assume is well, it's in it's definitely in Sarah's top five, top six. Um, the Jack Daniel single barrel barrel proof. This is one of the biggest whiskeys that we have in the house. This is bringing in at 65.4% ABV, oh. 130.8 proof. I've seen that and I haven't had it. I'm very curious. Tell me more about it. Uh, this is the second bottle of it that we've purchased. Uh, or I'm sorry, this is the this is the first. We've already purchased a second one for when this runs out because uh, my wife liked it so much the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, you still get that little bit of a banana Jack Daniels, right? But the proof, once you sip it, takes over, uh, and it becomes like um, jet fuel on your palate. <laughs> uh, and, and I think that's why she enjoys it as much as she does. Is she just she loves 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 high proof bourbon. She loves things that just mm -hmm. try to fight with her as far as bourbon goes. So I, I agree with Andy Hamman that the, the Jack Daniels barrel proof single barrel is the only one I like too of Jack Daniels. I don't like Jack Daniels. I I, I can agree with that too. I haven't. I haven't really enjoyed very much of Jack Daniel's products that I've had. The Gentleman Jack is, um, yeah. I put that in the category of uh, just ridiculously smooth bourbons like Blanton's, like, um, agree. you know, mm. like there's many others, but, uh, you know, other than that, no, I'm with you. I think that the, the barrel proof is the way to go if you're going to drink Jack. Oh, I think the Sinatra was definitely only okay and ridiculously <laughs> overpriced. Yes, yeah. that was Oh, that was so overpriced. Totally. It was so overpriced. Oh, what, what a for being joke. What it was. Ugh. No, that was that was kind of ridiculous, I think. Yeah, Donald, I would tell him all the above you've listed, I think would definitely be good Irish from. If he likes bourbon, those would be good ones to get him to try. If he likes bourbon casks for Irish, for sure. Yeah, Sinatra is crazy expensive. Writer's tier. I got to say, Writer's yeah. Tears is probably the coolest name ever. Just as a writer, it it appeals to me on so many levels. Also, delicious whiskey. I've heard yeah, that. I know. Oh, it's really good. I really like. I yeah. like Writer's Tears a lot. Yeah, people have told me that. It's something that I've been uh, wanting to try. I can send you some of that too. That's not a problem. Please do. Yeah, Walsh puts that out. That and the Irishman, which I guess I forget which award they just won. The Irishman, like a seventeen year, won a big award. The other day, Irishman makes really good stuff. Walsh is making great stuff. Okay, so Eric says it is episode 259, 1,000 Stories, Zinfandel, California. Cool. All right, we'll check that out for sure. You saw Sinatra for 80 bucks? Holy That's crap. Saying, for a liter. For a liter, Holy Matt. Crap. What? I think it's usually like 170 for the 750. Holy That's what I'm saying. That's uh, – I, I – Wow. I might give huh. that another shot for that price. For 80 bucks – it might be worth 80 bucks, but not worth I definitely give it another shot for that price, but I mm. like, oh God, that that was so overpriced. Yeah, we, we opened as a buddy's house and he's like, oh, we're going to open this for an egg and some next. We're like, oh, it's going to be all so great. And we're like, um, this isn't very good. <laughs> I, I hate that feeling. I hate when you get all excited about something and then you're like, mm, no. Oh, and Eric also says episode 240. It's a 2014 Cooper and Thief red wine blend from California. He did not like that one. Okay. Good to know. That's going to be those. Cooper and Thief is going to be way too sweet for Eric's palate. Eric is like me. When it comes to wine, he likes French and Spanish and things mm -hmm. with some character and some depth to it, and not California fruit. Well, I guess. Oh, Dustin says it's not just only a leader. So I guess it answers that question. It's only a leader. Oh, fair enough. Well, still eighty instead of one sixty. I a huge difference. That's a that's half the price. I'd exactly. I'd probably take the chance again on that. All right. So, let's how are see. you in drinking that darker than sin uh, whiskey, or did you pop that top? Oh no, no, that's staying closed. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> that is staying closed. Well, I have one of those almost like that. Our barrel pick of Lone Elm is coffee. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Nice. 
speaking of lone elm so we were able to get some a couple more barrels of that yeah we did we picked so up some more barrels. Available in a few weeks at mirage and it, it turned out delicious so if anybody actually wants to buy a bottle now it's gonna be available to buy so that's the other good news all right so i'm gonna pour some mictor's 10 year this is the 2017 edition oh that is so good that it is into a high so good glass. I've had a lot of Mictors. I, I, here's another one. Are you ready for this, Matt? I haven't yeah, tried that one either. This one either. Yep. Uh, Eric, uh, when you say it's also really hot, are you saying that it's just ridiculously ripe grapes, or are you saying that there's a high ABV on it as well? Sorry. Just want to know. Yeah, that Mictors 10 is amazing. It was, you know, the first time I had it, uh, we had done a live uh, in our living room with the uh, the the singer of Kansas, and oh, nice. he brought it over as a gift. And he's like, "Here, you know, I just wanted to thank you guys for having me over." And he gives us the the ten, and I'm looking at it, going, "Where did you get this?" <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, I don't know. I just picked it off the shelf. It looked like something you would enjoy, and it was just it was amazing." That's amazing. I, it up. I want to know where he shops. He picks it up off the shelf. Right? I know. I know. That's what I asked him. He's like, well, I don't know. There's just this little liquor store by my house. And, you know, the guy recommended it. <laughs> All righty then. Best best guy at liquor store ever. Right? I know. Uh, Galen wants to know, are we getting a loan of small batch? No, they're, all, they're single barrels. Uh, one of them came out at 114. One came out at, I think, 109. And, yes, yeah, so they're the 90-10 split, 90% wheat, 10% barley. It's a red winter wheat. Mm. Yeah, this this Mictors is fantastic. But I also really like, I know it's not a bourbon, but I also really like that Mictors American a lot. That's really good stuff. You had that one before? Mm, definitely. Good stuff. The Mictors American never leaves our house. That's another one of those refill bottles. When it empties, we'll, we'll be getting another one. Yeah. Ooh, Andy got the new toasted sour mash. Jason brought yeah, me that, that, good. that thing is, a, is very interesting. Yeah. I've been hearing about that. I uh, I haven't had it. Yeah, it's it was good. It, I, I never really had anything else like that to say the last. I I'm not a huge fan of the sour mash personally, but mm. uh, when it's done well, then it's it's awesome. And Eric wants to know if you met Carrie Livgren. Is that from Kansas? I guess. It's oh, that's uh, that's the original, I believe, singer of Kansas. This is Ron Platt. He is the uh, replacement singer. Ah, okay. Awesome. That's pretty cool. That's the kind yeah, of I thing you want to do. So just to make that a new requirement to get an interview, it gives me a really good bottle of bourbon. I know, I know. And here I was thinking, like, you know, it, it, we we were just going to hang out with a guy, and he's like, oh, hey, I'm bringing you whiskey, too. So it's not often musicians bring you gifts. Yeah, for real, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let alone good ones. Oh, and my producer's in the room. Just to remind you, you have a shoot in the morning. Oh, oh, yeah. You know what? Actually, guys, uh, my producer is charming uh i am actually gonna have to sign off here uh he reminded me that i have to do a shoot in the morning so oh, okay. yeah we've got nine Probably. minutes before we've got nine minutes before our sign off time so if you have, you have oh, more minutes in you i got one more pour to make all right i got nine minutes in me all right that's fair right, uh, we, we we'd like to keep it uh at about 11 o'clock if we can on our on our stream as well so keep it at about an hour and a half so that you know it's rewatchable yeah excellent not that we're opposed to long streams. We've done some collaborations on other channels that have been four or five hours total between the on, the off air and on air time. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I'm glad I I have my guy back there to remind me of things like that because I would keep drinking all night. Yes, that 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 happens very. Yeah, the time definitely flies by. You don't realize how the time is really quick on this show for sure. I know that's the best no. part of drinking whiskey and talking, you know, it's, it's just that cool balance of, you know, exactly. camaraderie. Oh, this is a good question from Donald. I was going to say, so actually, I think this is actually a better question for Juliet. If you want to answer well, yeah, I'll let you answer that. So I want to know what do people really mean when they say the classic bourbon noser flavor says he's new to bourbon and he's just wonder. Uh, well, I think, I think traditionally bourbon is going to have a very sort of, caramel sweet sort of scent a little bit of vanilla to it 
Uh, it's not going to overpower you. And that's kind of like when you drink something like Maker's Mark, it's a very smooth, easy flavor. Um, and for me, that's why I like something that has a little bit more rye in it, because you get that base where it's just smooth and easy to drink. But I like the rye that gives it a little bit more of a cinnamon flavor. So if you think of like a, um, like a, like a butterscotch candy with a little bit of vanilla in it and then a red hot candy mixed in. Uh, that's, that's kind of where I'm going with my flavors. Yeah. That's, that's pretty accurate. Yeah. But usually, yeah, it's usually, you know, Oak vanilla caramel. That's pretty okay. much bourbon for me. The class of what I usually find on it. That's good. You know, it's, it's the, it's the more complex ones that really suck you in. That's for sure. Yeah. The, you know, the, more that you drink, the more flavors that you're able to, you know, find that you like, that you're able to pull out of it. And me, I mean, I'm still learning. I mean, I've been drinking for a while, but I've only been talking about it for, you know, about a year or so. And, you know, you just, you, you keep drinking and experimenting and, you know, learning as you go. Exactly. Yeah, there's, there's always some new one for sure, as far mm -hmm. as bourbon goes. All right. I'm probably going to hit up a few more of these because I brought a ton of these out. Um, okay, this is a good one that people generally don't know about. Is Orphan Barrel's Barger House 20 year? <gasps> oh, bravo. Oh, I love that. This is, one of, this is probably my favorite Orphan Barrel. Um, I've had some of the other ones that are more expensive or more um, harder to find. I wasn't that impressed. This one is just freaking awesome. Yes, yeah. it is outstanding. Hands down, I one of the best. this one at least a year, so... Oh, and and as know. my number one, uh, or as our household number one, I think I'm going to go ahead and say that our is going to be Joseph Magnus. Uh, wow, interesting choice. It's just rich and deep and dark um, in comparison to a lot of bourbons that are just sweet and uh, you know simple. This this has a lot more going on with it. I haven't tried the cigar blend, but I I think I'm going to like that one even better. But as of right now, this is the bourbon in my house that it, even though it cost $100, I'm going to replace that bottle when it's gone. Uh, I just, I love it a lot. It's it's my over $100, but yeah, I don't really care. It's still ridiculously mm -hmm. good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, that would be the Orphan Barrel Rhetoric 24 year. Mm, okay. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, I just, it, it had the perfect balance of everything, a little bit of chocolate to it, you know, that, that sort of bitter coffee flavor without being overwhelming, uh, just hands down out of all of the, the um, rhetoric releases, that was my favorite. Have, which other rhetorics have you had? I did them all. And the one I disliked, okay. yeah, uh, the one I disliked the most was 25. I feel like mm -hmm. it was, <laughs> it was just one year too many. Yeah, I um, agree. And 24 was hands down my favorite. Yeah, I like the 22 a lot. That was my favorite of them. Mm. I, I'm i trying to ask answer a question from Richie Z asking uh, what our favorite whiskey of 2019 has been so far. I, I, I'm going to have to put some serious thought into that. I've had, wow. I've had some seriously ridiculous whiskey this year. Um, and it's really hard for me to say wow. you know, some of my favorites, even, even some of my favorites, let alone my favorite. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's, I've had a lot of whiskey this year. I don't know. Several there's a yeah. barrel product that I won't name. That That's definitely one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I love the uh, uncle nearest green label. That was fantastic. Um, Cream of Kentucky had a really excellent release that I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And uh, th there's a Bardstown bourbon. I don't remember what release it was. I'd have to look it up, but it was it was outstanding. Oh, I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah, that Joe Mag is so good. I'm trying to think of a 2019 that came out this year that I. So much of this that's, that I've had this year for the first time, but it's older. Well, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know if that's mm -hmm. what the question is. Like, it, in my 2019, I've had some crazy, wonderful things. So, no yeah, uh, whether or not it was released in 2019 may or may right. not be. That's you know, a different story. But, yeah, it my, was just new to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think new to, yeah, I think new. Yeah, exactly. I think new to me is probably the best is the better option. It came out in 2019. Really, the biggest surprise for me, I mean, to really be honest, is how good it was. It's Tawankara. 
Yeah, for being as young as it is. Uh, so they're a four grain bourbon company. Um, they're making a bourbon and a rye um, here in our area in Texas. That, that that was a pretty interesting one. All right, we got two minutes left in the stream. Juliet, let's go ahead and uh, let you have one final plug. Go ahead and tell people where they can find you and uh, and, and all that. So. Of course, yeah. So I'm Juliet Miranda, and my podcast is The Unwritable Rant, and my YouTube channel is Juliet Miranda Bourbon Soaked Live. And uh, y'all, I tell bourbon soaked stories, all sorts of great stuff about dating rock stars and drinking bourbon and all sorts of good stuff. Sounds like a good time. That's for sure. It can't well, be. It's been a blast having you on, Juliet. Your knowledge yeah. has been wonderful. Uh, sure. So we appreciate you hanging out with us for a little while. No, I am so glad you guys asked me up here. This has been a blast. Thank you for having me. And I, I, I hope Sarah feels better too. I'm bummed she couldn't join us tonight. She will. She takes a little bit to get over sickness, but she'll be, she'll be, get, she'll be getting over it. She'll be good. And uh, I'm going to send you out our address and uh, send me yours in exchange. And uh, we'll make sure we get you some of that whiskey acres. Okay. Sounds fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And that'll, that'll get you some good stuff. Yeah, good. Good, good deal. Stuff. That's for sure. Right. Love stuff. it. And all that's right. All the fans. So, uh, really appreciate everybody coming in and hanging out with us tonight. Matt, you got anything else? Um, we got So tonight, uh, so next, uh, let's see, tomorrow's review is going to be the H&H, H&H &H 10 star. And then Thursdays will be the Hancock Presidential Reserve. So that's what's coming out this week. Um, presidential Select or Presidential Reserve? I don't freaking know at this point. Doesn't matter. It's one of those two. Um, but anyway, I'm pretty sure it's the Reserve. You're but, you're right. I got it wrong in the video. That's why I was making a joke. I was like, I'm pretty sure it's Reserve. But anyway, um, <laughs> next week's episode, I'm not sure what next Monday is going to be yet. Um, I have like a crap load of business cards, so we'll let you know which uh, which what it's going to be when I figure out which distillery is coming on. But there's going to be somebody here for sure. So we can tell everybody's been great and chat with everybody tonight. I mean, if anyone wants to hang out, I'm willing to hang out longer if you guys want to get off or whatever. That's fine, too. It's what everybody wants to do tonight. That's so. fair. Well, I, I'm going to go ahead and sign off, Juliet. I think you have something that you need to get mm. to, too. So we're going to be signing I off. Do. Uh, so. I'll say good night, Matt. If you want to stay on for a while, but yeah, I have a bit over yeah, for whiskeys because I don't have to work tomorrow and I don't care. Oh, fair enough, man. <laughs> Just as a last thought, uh, this Joe Mag is every bit as glorious as I remember it being. Yeah, so if you guys want to continue to drink, in the nose. let me know and I'll hang out for a little while longer if everybody in the chat wants to still hang out. So. All right. Well, I am off, guys. Thanks for having me on and uh, so cheers much. to everybody in the chat. Thanks, Juliet. I really appreciate right. it. We will get in touch with you again, and we'll have another have you back on for Texas night. That'll be a blast. Love it. Can't wait. All right. Cheers. Thank you very much. Cheers. All right, Matt. I think I'm signing off too, my friend. All right. See ya. I hope you have a good rest of your evening. You too. People in the chat, thank you so much for joining us. Talk to you later, all. All right. I'll all right, so I guess if you guys want to hang for a little bit, we'll get all right. Night, Brad. Thanks for coming in. Really appreciate. Yeah, definitely uh, need to organize the night for sample streaming for sure. That will be fantastic. Um, all right, so Richie Z is going to hang out, and some other people will be hanging out. Yeah, so hang out for a little bit longer because I want to go over some more of these uh, top burdens because why the hell not? Yes, I will do that next year, Eric. Eric, send me an email or just hit me up in Discord and remind me before next year I will bring things. Oh, oh yeah. What was the the, the Juntos? However the heck you pronounce that thing from uh, Balcones? That thing was amazing. You can't go wrong with that thing at all. It was just absolutely delicious for sure. Uh, it is the Balcones single malt finished in the French oak and then finished again in tequila barrel. It was unbelievable. That's for sure. You can't go wrong with that. The new Master's Keep Cornerstone. Tall, yes. So I have tried the new Master's Keep um, Cornerstone. Uh, a buddy brought it by about a month ago. I personally wasn't that impressed with it. Now, granted, we also had a lot of drinks prior to it, so I'll have to go back and revisit it at some point. But at, at the time, I was not impressed, so I will certainly try it uh, again at some point in time. That's for sure. I do not know the answer to that question, though. The pants are coming off, Trevor. Great, Trevor. That's great. I'm sure Eric Waite will join you in taking his pants off because 
That's what he's known for, not wearing pants. It's always a good time, that's for sure. Hmm. Yeah, all right. So let's see. Let's move on to how about Old Forester birthday bourbon because I love this stuff. Uh, ooh, some SWS. S. MWS Balconis, ooh, that does sound good. I would love to see what those guys do with the Balconis. That's for sure. Let's see here. So we got this. Oh, D D, nothing like free balling. Yeah, that's true. Can't beat that. That's you know, always a good time for sure. Ah, oh, smells so good. How far behind is my freaking live? Oh, it's eight minutes behind. That's good. Chat's fine with the. Yeah, that's good. Anyway, this is the phone. Who cares? All right, so we'll hang out for a little while, give you guys a little extra innings tonight because, you know, bourbon, why not? Head to Balcones, a true boost cash rank. Um, okay, I would try them both, Jason Unsworth, to be honest with you. Um, I love both of those. It, they're both totally different flavor profiles, so just pick the one you like the best. Try them both. Now, if you can only get one, I'd probably get the bourbon because it's harder to get the bourbon than the true boost cash rank. We can probably find them. And Eric Wade is wearing leaner hosen because it's sucked October rain Oktoberfest. That's a definitely a good idea. I love doing that. Who doesn't wear leaner hosen? Because it sounds super comfortable, I'm sure. Yes, the old Forrester birthday bourbon is more or less unattainable, thankfully. Um, so my birthday is in a week. And so for the last two years, I've convinced the liquor store guy that I go to all to give me one for my birthday. So I was like, you need to give it to me. It's, it's my birthday. So I go there on my birthday just to make it give me a birthday bourbon. And so two years in a row have been successful. I've got a 17 and an 18, so... I tried the 19 with Chad, with Chad and Sarah um, last week, and it was good, but it, the finish just totally dropped off at the end. So I don't know if we'll be going for that one or not this year. Now, if someone offers it up, I'll probably take them up on just because why not? Oh, this one's good. Uh, oh, 2500 just to bite to buy it. Yeah, no, that's dumb. Montreal Canadiens PJ. So that's good, Donald. Glad to hear that. Oh, I got these at retail. I paid 100 for each of my, my birthday, so it doesn't bother me in the slightest. 100 was a good price. I, I think I guess the actual retail was maybe was like 80 but whatever. I, I'm not complaining at $100. I, I'd never seen it cheaper than $100, so I wasn't complaining for paying 100 bucks. So what do, what do I want for my birthday? To be honest, what I really need is another William Relu Weller because, you know, that's all that's left. That that's I need another one of these. I've got another Stag and another Thomas Handy, so those are good. Or probably some really rare Scotch, or probably even better. Um, I'd love to get another thirty-five year Longmore. That'd be great. Ooh, the Oxmoor nine point one. I've not tried the Oxmoor nine point one, but I hear good things. Oh, you can spend just fifteen hundred just to get a B tag. Get right on that, Dustin. That's a great thing. Oh, <laughs> Will says we need a label maker. Will's probably right. You know, Captain and Ben they brought their here and they helped out. We, they labeled some things. It's all good. That's for sure. But yeah, um, let's see. Other things I'd probably would really like would be a uh, probably like a Habiki twenty one. Or something like that would be really nice because that that's just I don't have anything like that. I've got a Nika twenty one and a seventeen, but I don't have any Hibiki age dated ones. I don't have the twelve, seventeen, or twenty. But Brad from Cast Rank was kind enough to give me a a uh, sample of the seventeen Hibiki, so I'm really looking forward to trying that one on a stream with them. So that should be a blast. How does the birthday compare to the nineteen twenties? The best it's. Significantly more complex. Now, granted, the 1920 is 115 proof. I think it's only 90 for this one. Yeah, this one's 96. Yeah, so this one's 96 proof. Um, I think it's more complex, the 17. But uh, I think the 115 for an everyday drinker is freaking great. So if you if you never try to try the birthday, I think the 115 is really close. But it, there's just a lot more complexity uh, for me as far as on the on the birthday. So the Nika 17 is freaking awesome. I love the Nika 17. Um, let's see. No, you should definitely pass for 689 and 550 for Lumi Well. No, Richie, do not pay that. That's not worth it. Really, Dustin, how much for the uh, the 12 year on the Habiki? Is it a reasonable price? That's the real question. Is it reasonable? 
Yeah, no, like, of course, the only thing I have is the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the Harmony. Harmony's good, I like that one a lot. Oh, there we go, the, the Yamasaki 50, only sold for 175,000 euros. I'll get right on that. There you go. Oh, Dustin, Dustin's just, he's just screwing with me. He says that, oh, I'm thinking of something else. Now, Hakushu 12, yeah, you can get that, you can get, you can get Yamasaki 12, those are no big deal to pick up. But yeah, Habiki 12, forget it. It's discontinued. But if somebody knows where a store, they don't want it for some random reason. It's still sitting there. That'd be great. Oh, yeah, the Nika straight from the barrel. Oh, it's stuff so freaking good. Yeah, the funny thing is last year, before it won any awards, I actually brought one of those to La Quinta. We finished a bottle of it last year at La Quinta. It was freaking awesome. Uh, Eric, I have all of the Game of Thrones scotches, and we will be reviewing all of them. Just haven't gotten around to it yet. Holy crap, hot buttery rolls. You have a Habiki 21 unopened. That one is not discontinued yet. Either way, it's still really rare, and uh, it's freaking awesome. I got to, I did get to try that one over at uh, Liquor Hound's house, which was freaking great. Yeah, if basically, the whiskey I don't have, Liquor Hound does, so it, it's, it's nice to have friends that have even more amazing older collections than I have. So he's been doing this a lot longer. He's, he's simply older, so that, that helps too. But yeah, he's been doing this for a long time. And it's amazing, amazing stuff. And it's great to go to his house to get a history lesson too. Because he has so much older whiskey that you just it just doesn't make anymore. So yeah. Well, Iron Root, yeah, if you want to look, I think I missed a question. Yeah. Yeah, I think the 21 is still around as far as I know. Uh, man. A written, I do not have any Habiki 12 at all. Got two on the shelf, $50 a couple, wow, a couple years ago. I have not opened the 84 uh, red yet, Andy. Maybe in a little bit. Plus, it's I think it would be like not go so well tonight. Eh, $300 is not that bad, I don't think. You got to go and review all the whiskey you got? Yes, we are going to review all the whiskey kill adults that we were donated at La Quinta. There's absolutely no doubt. Uh, we will review it all. Really what we're waiting on for a lot of it is who the hell gave it to us because we just don't know. Everybody's just like, well, whenever you leave tonight, take whatever's left as a donation. I'm like, okay, works for me because a lot of really great stuff we've got for sure. Yes, Richie Z, um, I do hang out with Liquor Hound. Chris Trevino is freaking awesome. Yes, yeah, so we don't live that far apart, and we do hang out on occasion. So we like to share great whiskey. Just a lot of times, a lot of times it's just the two of us. Hanging out, so it's a freaking blast. So we both just try to bring crazy, stupid whiskeys to each other and have a great time. Um, the only ones I've had of those uh, Derek Galishes is this one here, the uh, Grinnell's Forest and the Bluebell Forest, which is that's tree one, and the other one's tree four. So there's only two I've had, but they're amazing. Um, yes, you must ensure your collection. That's very important. There's no doubt on that. And yes, it's insured. Because if you don't insure it, you're an idiot. It's too damn expensive not to. What store is most excited to try in 20? There's a few hours there laying down. Uh, I know there's some scotches coming out um, next year. Um, what the hell is it called? There's another island that's up there and then far north west of scotland actually they're one of our followers on instagram i need to i need to get in, crack in contact with them i want to say called like rasby something like that that's a little island that sounds really good yeah on the tariff you know we're, we'll see if the distilleries eat that tariff or if we're gonna all pay it or what i'm really hoping the tariff just kind of just dies down and doesn't end up going to affect in reality and it's just simply going to go away for it actually it's the show we'll see Everything will be okay for a while. So we get screwed over. So yeah, Rassy, that's it, Jason. Jason Coates. That's, that's the right one. That's what it is. So yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, Eric, that one. They they're following us on I know Instagram and stuff. And yeah, I want to get. They're supposed because I guess they started in seventeen. So next year they should have whiskey out for us to try. I mean, it'll be obviously three-year whiskey, but I still want to try it. So I think that'll be really good. That's true, too. Brexit could happen soon. Who the hell knows? It's going to be a total crazy stuff going on over there. Who the hell knows? Ooh, you did, Eric. How was that? 
That's awesome you met one of those guys. That's exciting. Did he have any bring up his uh, not technically whiskey yet with him by chance to let you try? I have not had the Danish whiskey. Uh, I do know what it is. One of my friends, uh, actually, it's Brian from uh, that does Pit Face Barbecue. His mother is Danish, so he goes to Denmark every year, and he got a bottle that I don't know. He, I think he was looking at getting a bottle while he was there, but I don't know if he actually got one to bring back. But hopefully when he goes back next year, he'll bring one back for us. So, Oh, Eric, that's too bad. Oh, oh well, it is what it is. No, well, why would we hate you if you hated if you enjoyed Maker's Mark Cashman or the 107? It's what you like. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. It, it works. For my breakfast is a Danish. I do enjoy Danishes for breakfast. They're quite good. That's good stuff. So no, you can drink whatever the hell whiskey you want. It's your whiskey. What the hell's difference does it make? Whiskey's so subjective. It's whatever you like. It just doesn't matter. Oh, it's good stuff. All right, so let's move on to – now, I don't have – unfortunately, this bottle is empty. I was going to put it on there tonight. Is the Pappy 20-year, which is a 17, and it was really good, really, really good. But we finished it off with 80 different people at the McAllen Highland Park event because what else do you do with whiskey? You share it with a shitload of people. So that's what I did, and I'm glad I did. And we were all happy, and it was really tasty. Now, all right, so another one I wanted to bring out was the Barrel fin Now, granted, I know this is not like the greatest Parker Heritage ever made, but I still like it. It's the Barrel Finish Corsau, um 110 proof Parker's Heritage. I really like this one. Um, it's like an orange creamsicle. So it's tasty stuff. Can't go wrong. But I think the eight and the 11 year. Now, I knew that I have not had this year's rye. I'd love to try this year's rye from them. But it's really tasty. Uh, yes, that's Floki from Iceland on our past whiskey, which, are which I do have a sample of. We're trying to get Sarah to drink Floki because it'll be funny. And it's not that bad. Night, Eric Evanson. Thanks for coming in, bud. Really great to have you in here this evening. Uh, let's see here. Ooh, it was a cognac. I've not had the cognac finished Parker's Heritage. That sounds delicious. But yeah, so there's a bar here called the Keller Tavern, and they had the eight from um, Parker's Heritage, and they had it on the shelf. Never made it in the computer, and so for six ninety five a glass was what you could have. I was like, I'll pay six ninety five all day long. I probably drank half that bottle at that bar because it was so freaking good. Uh, I've not had the rye yet, Dustin. I have had the eight year. Hmm. Oh, it's so, yeah, seriously, it's like sucking on an orange dreamsicle. It's creamy and it's rich. It's also got that nice cinnamon spice on it. I just really love this one. Ooh, man, hot butter rolls. You got all sorts of cool stuff at your house, apparently. It's unopened. You got to open it up, man. It's the best way to, the best thing to do with whiskey is open it and drink it. Yeah, six ninety five a glass, which is insanely cheap. Because it's funny, they were talking like, they're like, is that like uh, Jim Bean? Sure, it's just like Jim Bean. Yeah, so six ninety five a glass. I'm like, yes, please. Just keep them coming. Yeah, that was good. I took my friends there, took my mom there. We all drank it. We finished it eventually, but it was fantastic. We drank at least eight, at least half that bottle. With a rise in eight year two. Ooh, awesome. I'll have to try that. I do love the uh, the Woodford Double Oak a lot. Oh, so we tried in the Whiskey Vault. We did try the Woodford Double Double Oak. Holy crap, was that good. I don't know if anybody else has ever had that one. That one, if you haven't had a chance, is great. Oh, no, we'll not be going to Andalusia's release in the ninth. I'd love to, but, you know, got kids and stuff. It makes it kind of hard. That's kind of far. Uh, that sounds awesome, though. If you're going to that, now we actually are going to have Ty on to talk about all of their share, all their PX releases. So it might be next week or the week after. We're actually going to have Ty on to talk about those. So that'll be great from Andalusia. Yeah, anybody that was there that tried the ND Andalusia's three cast strength sherry cast finishes, holy crap, are those good? So I really love that striker finishing. It. it was my favorite of the three, but they were all amazing. Ooh, a little fry. 
Wait, crap. A level five char on the rye. Ooh, that sounds delicious. I have like five bottles of 100 that aren't open. But you nailed two of them. That's funny. Yeah. That's, that sounds like me. There's like, there's, oh my, I don't even know how many balls are open here. Probably well over a thousand. I have no doubt about that. I do, the Parker's Heritage Barrel. That is, or not part, the JD Her, J, Jack Daniels Heritage Barrel. Yes, that is definitely one of the best ones they make, for sure. Show, show, okay. Yeah, I agree. Good, perfect. Um, let's see, what else is the question here? What's, what are any thoughts on you? Yeah, um, I do like that uh, Captain Make It Happen brought some of that young Battle Hill for your Bunahaven. It was really good. I would buy it. if you, I, And Glenella Key is a really hard one to get anyway. I would probably pick that up for 25% off. I think that would be worth your time and money for sure. So we'll see. But, yeah, I'd pick it up for that point. <laughs> ADHD fishing. You can't even count to 1,000. That's perfect. That's a good time. You don't have to count to 1,000. Just say, here, drink this. That also works rather than counting it. Mm. Blanton's bottled down. There you go. Mm hmm. Yeah. That, yeah. PX finished striker was definitely unique for sure. Number of Americas you said in your video. I'll have to check out ADH Christian's new. I know he's got a, two, a YouTube channel. And I'll have to go check that out. With that many bottles, do you glass them? Do I gas them? Um, no. I parafilm a lot of them, but I don't gas them. Most of them don't have very much out of them. The mass majority of my bottles have maybe a half inch or less out of them. I, we don't drink that many of them. Um, it's, it's samples, and then we put, cap them back up. So the ones that do have less out of them, I don't gas them because these are going to get drank fairly the next year or two, so I don't really bother gassing them. If I do, we'll probably use the Argon gas. That's what uh, Chris was telling me to use is the Argon. That's what he uses to gas all his collections, so... Gordon High Wards, 49 year. Holy crap. Um, yeah, you want to. Wow. If you get a hold of that, that'd be great to try that. I've, I've never had a 49 year. The oldest I've had is a 45 year. Holy crap. Yeah, that'd be something else. Bottles per week. Do I limit? Do you limit yourself to number of bottles per week? I try to keep it one or two. No, I'll drink whatever. I don't, I don't care. Every night's usually something different. Um, it's whatever. I don't really limit myself because why would I limit myself with this beautiful collection around me? Seems kind of pointless than having a giant collection if you can't drink whatever the hell you wanted. So no, I drink whatever. I don't. I don't really care. I rarely drink the same thing though. At this point, most of the ones that are lowered, it's because I've shared them out. It's not because I drank them. Which works fine for me. So I. I really. really one of my favorite things about whiskey is sharing. So I share a ton of it, and it works out just fine. So I mean. Especially like that Pappy I was saying. I think I had two drams out of that thing. The rest I, I just shared out because why not? It was really good. Um, oh, do I? Oh, buy. Oh, you mean buy. Um, depends on the week. <laughs> it just depends on the week to be real honest on how many you buy. Sometimes it's one. Sometimes it's none. Sometimes it's ten. It just depends on the week. So let's see. What else should we drink tonight? Now, this is not big man, small batch bookers, but it, it still belongs in the top for sure. And because it's bookers and why the hell not? So what else we got here? Oh, it's a night. Oh, oh, sorry. It's not a fortune. It's a 19 year old called the 49 Wellington. Okay. The address, a good or high under warts offices. Oh, okay. 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 That makes more sense. Uh, ooh. Yes, that signatory Glenn Keith was great. I totally agree, Andy. That was a good one, no doubt. Eric, that is awesome. Drinking souvenirs from Scotland. Yeah, and like Victoria C says, for science, of course. Mm. Yes, the signatory Glenn Keith is a higher ABV. I don't I can look it up real quick. I don't know what the proof on it is offhand, but it's like 120, something like that. Let's see. I'll get the spreadsheet. Let's see here. Not that one, not that one. 
All right, let's see. Signatory Glenn Keith. Signatory, signatory. Glenn Keith is at 109.4. So that's what that is. So that works. Um, you can get Caden Heads occasionally at Specs in Texas. That's the only liquor store that I know of that, that uh, carries them. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. <sighs> Booker's. It's good. Not as good as that big man small batch, though. That thing was magic. I can never find a ball that that would totally be worth it. Yeah, and the re oh, yeah, so Dean, so yeah, so Specs is definitely a place to get that Glen Keith for sure. Um, if your Specs doesn't have it, see if you can get one in, in another part of I don't count. I think you said you're in Houston or whatever. I know there's more than one Specs in Houston. See if you can get them to transfer it between stores. If your Specs doesn't have it, um, that's what I try to do: get stuff done or have some, have send a runner to other states or not to other, to other counties for me. And they'll go pick it up so I don't have to because why should I drive there when someone else will? But for their efforts, I always reward them with getting a try of everything I buy. So I think it seems like a good, fair deal. So, um, yeah, I don't remember, Jason. You probably gave me some. I don't remember if I had the Caden Heads 31 year Coila. It's, I'm pretty sure you did. But, dude, I had so much to freaking drink. I don't remember. I, I hate to say that, but. I mean, come on, we we're in the vault. I probably tried like 30 in the vault prior. I wasn't driving, so I didn't care. Thankfully, you know, we weren't drunk or anything, but, you know, you just, your palate can only handle so much in one evening, but you keep us hanging out with everybody and trying what everybody puts in your hand, but it was all good. Yeah, I don't remember. I did. See, I figured I, I knew you, I, I knew you had given it to me, but I just, I don't remember, man. It's just, there's just, there were too many things put in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, have, have the runners do it. Because I know sometimes the spec employees will go get it and bring it back over. Um, so I'll do it. I have no idea. That's up to ADHD if, if we'll get Beagle Rare or not. I don't know. That's completely up to him. Yeah, and Kyoko, that's correct. All the whiskey can be a much, much of that times. Absolutely. Yeah. I, like, all I can tell you is at that point was, like, when, when uh, Jason gave me the 31, is good. Or not good. That was really all you're at at that point because you're just, you're just, you've had so much. Your palate fatigue is, out of, and everything you've had has been ridiculous because a lot of it was from the lock cabinet. So it's kind of like whatever. Yes, I would love to have, Donald, I'd like to have you on to talk about Irish because you know, like, what, even more than Irish than I even do. So you seem to be able to get a lot more releases than I can either, which is nice. Hmm. What's the cost on your uh, Glenfiddich IPA? I personally actually like that one a lot, um, surprisingly, because I usually don't like IPA finished things, but I actually really enjoy that specific Glenfiddich. So my brother, Night Dean, we'll see you later. Love the, oh yeah, the Redemption Weeded, that is a good one. Yeah, oh, 67, I, I'd pick it up for 67. I think that's a good price. I would, I would pick it up. If you like Glenfiddich and you want to find something more unique and interesting with Glenfiddich, I think the IPA cask is quite good. The whole experimental series is good. You've got what? The IPA, the XX, the uh, Winter Storm, and the Fire and Cane so far. Everyone, uh, I have all four of them. I think they're all really good. Hell, you know, one time I'm sure we'll do an episode just on different Glenfiddich ones. We can do Glenfiddich night at some point. Uh, I can get the Nika from the barrel here for about 60 So... Yeah, if you can get it for close to that, it's hell worth it. Hell, to be honest, it's worth a hundred bucks. To be real honest, the Nika from the barrel is freaking awesome. If you can find it, hell, when I got it, I lucked out. I knew happened to know what it was because I had friends talking about that they had it in Japan. They should ever see it, buy it. So I bought a case of it when it came here. So it was really good though. Mm. Yeah, Fire and Cane is really good. You guys like that. Uh, 750, 60 for, it's a 750 here in the U S I don't know. Yeah. I know in Japan it was a 500, but here it's a 750. You have to see. Yeah. Mm hmm. Do like that. All right. What else we got here? So what else we got? A couple more to go. 
and we'll knock this call it a night. Um, I poured this earlier, but never talked about it. This is a Elijah Craig 18 year, 45. percent This is the uh, 2018. I'll pour a little more just because it's really good. Mm. All right. That's not too bad. 89 is it's getting a little high, but it's probably still worth it to me. Just because it's so hard to get at this point in time. Mm. Oh, does it really? I have not had it out from I didn't I did try the 23 in the uh, in the vault. You got a, tw a 23 from 1991? Holy crap. Pre-fire? Wow. That's awesome. That's still really cool, even as it's part of a bottle. That's fantastic. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, I do like this one. I've tried the older 18s as well. I actually like this one better. But, you know, yeah. Coco, I did the same thing. I, I finished my dry week yesterday because basically from the time I left uh, 8th Bourbon Nights meetup and then yesterday until about 9, 10 o'clock, I hadn't had a drink in a week, so I'm done. Because I was like, after the Austin, I had last week's live stream, I just drank water. So I'm like, I'm done. I can't drink any more alcohol. It's just, it just didn't matter. Old Scout. Ooh, that's a good one. String barrel pick. There you go. That's a good one, Galen, for sure. Mm. Uh, well, one hundred seven. Okay. Ooh, you found an e you found an e two thousand nine in the shelf for one fifty. I picked that up in a heartbeat for one fifty. Definitely should buy that. Wow. Then it goes to the podcast. My bro house. I wish she wants Barbara Lens and then Dixon. Oh, cool. Hmm. There's not going to be any whiskey originally left back in there. Yeah, I, I think that was the, the right choice to have self-imposed. I know that they had, I don't think they had dry weight for another week or whatever. <laughs> oh, Eric. Eric says that for me, a dry week is going seven days without having to wear Depends undergarments. That, that's a plus, Eric, for sure. Oh, that's great. Oh, I can't wait. I, Eric, are you going to be on Whiskey Dick's Halloween episode next next Friday night? I don't know if I don't I don't know who else is on it. Bill hasn't told me. I know I guess Bobby and Sam are. I know we are. It it should be hilarious to say the least. I have to think of a damn costume though, but I'll figure that out later. Who knows? All right, let's see. What else should we drink? All right, I think George T. Stag. This is a 2017 uh, 129.2. We just did a review on it, so there's not much left. So put a little bit in here. So um, we have done episodes with Eric. We have done some with uh, with Scott, of course. We did actually quite a few with Scott and Bart. Uh, Scott and then Scotch four dummies. I have well, I've talked to Drew and stuff. We are going to do some with them. They've just been so busy every time we ask them to do one. But we were they're definitely going to do one with them, and we'll do some with Roy as well. We just haven't had the hardest part with Roy is the fact that he's you know it'll probably be a weekend one we'll have to do with Roy just because of the time difference being over in uh, in Scotland. So we'll probably do, we I'm sure we'll do one with Roy. There's no doubt we talked about it, so I'm sure we will at some point. <sighs> My preference in whiskey, um, I'm probably a Scotch person first, and then bourbon. Um, but you know, I love all whiskeys. I mean, I'll be real honest. I love whiskey in general. Have I ever had any pre-prohibition whiskey? Yes, I have. I had a 1918 Old Jordan. I, I have. I split. I had half, and I gave the other half of what I had of it to Chad and Sarah for their wedding. So they'll get a review on their live stream uh, one of these days for their for that wedding gift. Mm. What's left of what, Captain? Oh, the stag? Sure, why not? Um, 
Oh, that's a good reason. It's 6 a.m. That that'll do it at the Annandale one. Yeah, I'll have to. I'll have to talk to Roy and see if can figure out what when works for him. I know when I was talking to Roy at La Quinta, I know his his wife is. Uh, you know, he's been really busy lately. I don't know how pleased she is at the moment about all the whiskey stuff. Of course, I'm not sure how pleased my wife is about all the whiskey stuff. And it's just like every time we get this, she's like, "We're getting bigger and bigger," and she's like. Yeah, which means more and more time with whiskey. I'm like, yes, which is great for me. Not so great for her, but yeah, she's a good sport about it. She puts up with this crazy collection I have. So, you know, in all reality, I really can't complain that much, uh, all things considered. So, so you know, it is what it is. Um. Oh, yeah. If you haven't had the uh, Iron Root Kilco, I if I don't know if you have that or not. If you you don't, it's it's really good. You want me to pull it up again? I can hold that up. That's Iron Root uh, Republic. Actually, we're hoping to actually go there tomorrow and hang out with Robert and Jonathan. Um, so we'll see. Should be a good time. But yeah, I love all whiskey. I don't really, but I mean, I, sh I probably shoot towards Scotch more than anything. But. Uh, I drink everything. I mean, shit, look, look at the freaking bourbons here we have next to me. Just we're talking about this evening. It's pretty crazy. Uh, the new, no, I've not had the Glenfiddich Grand Cru. I do want to get one, but I also saw the price and I'm like, not that I'm opposed to spending that much money on whiskey. I'm not. Um, I just that I spent a lot of money lately on whiskey and but that's not really a surprise. And also I had to pay for a hotel in Austin, all that fun stuff. And, drive down there and most of it thankfully god willing the awesome part was that i don't really think of it only i don't think i paid for any meals besides the hotel. some stuff we had uh brought in from i think yeah we paid for tacos i think the day sunday when we left everything else was paid for by somebody else which was freaking awesome so i, I do appreciate that oh yeah if yeah kill call that that if you do get a chance or get somebody to if, that is totally worth picking up that harbinger for sure but yeah, on the Grand Cru, that'd be great. I would love to try it. Cheers, Eric. Thanks for coming in, bud. Really appreciate it. It was awesome to hang out with you again down in Austin. And uh, hopefully hopefully next time you come back to Texas, you can go out here to North Texas and we can hang out some more distilleries up here and have a good time and get into all sorts of trouble because, you know, that's what we do best. Maybe we'll go to a uh, type of work convention. It'll be good times. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, uh, Trev says half Maker's Mark, half Weller's 107 in the glass. Oh, Coco, you have no idea how much trouble with <coughs> excuse me, how much trouble whiskey tubers get get into when we're all together in one room. You can't talk about any of that, but uh, it's very entertaining. Let's put it that way. So yeah, we have a good time together. That's for sure. It is a it's a very small, close knit community of whiskey tubers, and it's a freaking blast. And we're all just a bunch of whiskey nerds and have a great time. No complaints. Yeah, and like I said, especially if you were at La Quinta, I mean, it's it, we're all, it's all like that. Everybody's pretty much what you see on YouTube. That's how we all are in real life. None of us, none of this is a sham or a, a show. Um, especially like the live streams, that's how we are. I mean, I know that like our reviews, some of us, you know, it's whatever, because we're trying to be professional, whatever. But as far as like our stream, everybody's just whatever. We always have a good time. We like to talk. We all like to nerd out, have a great time. Oh, Eric, Dustin, you have a bottle that's unopened? Oh, it's horrible. You have to open that immediately. Solve that problem. Now there's there's so much crap here unopened, or not so much non unopened. There's very little that's not opened here, so that's a good thing. Yeah, exactly, Trevor. Yeah, everybody acts exactly the same. There's nobody that's putting on a show. We're, we're all simply having a good time and chatting and hanging with people and just drinking all sorts of crap. Oh, oh no, you have a backup. Oh, you got two open to the same thing. That sucks. Unless it was free, then it's okay. That's a good deal. All right, Night Richie Z, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Yeah, we'll, we'll jump off here. I don't know if we, if we want to hang out. I'll hang out for like twenty minutes or so, and then I'm going to be done because you know I 
I may not work tomorrow, but I'm still taking my kids to school. And uh, I have to like get up in time, make sure they're on time. So that does help a lot. And I'm freaking getting tired. So it's all good. Let's see. <laughs> you know what, Kilco? If as long as you're the same person you are when you are reviewing stuff, that that's all that matters. Uh, people can tell if you're being fake, so just be yourself, and that's the best advice I can give you. Is simply just be yourself. Have a good time. Enjoy the whiskey. It's all good. It's kind of a shitty hotel unless it's full of whiskey. <laughs> Get a room on a low floor or the water pressure won't be awesome. Now, the hot butter rolls. The good news is, so so we rolled into Austin. And, of course, everybody, like I said, we were late to the freaking pick. The pick I freaking organized, which sucks. But, you know, it is what it is. So we got there to La Quinta. You know, go running in. She's like, oh. And I was like, I got to beat out at the um, Salt Lick for this pick. She's like, well, I'll give you the first floor. I'm like, thank God, because I got to roll in here like, you know, my whole trunk's full of whiskey. Like last year, we broke the freaking elevator with all the damn whiskey on the cart. So thank God we all did that. So, you know, it worked out being the first floor because it would have sucked. Because you be quick. That cart I means shit. Hell, the whole damn cart's over on the floor over there. I haven't bothered to unload the damn thing yet. I don't know. There's like, um, I don't know. 60, 70 whiskeys over there, something. It's a lot. Either way, it's all good. Exactly. So, now thankfully, our water pressure was good. Okay, so that's a question I have, everybody, that was a La Quinta. How were your rooms? Like, they need to seriously update the hell out of that place. Staff was great, but as far as the rooms themselves, I mean, if I think if we had paid the 100, it wouldn't have been so bad. The 200 is a little bit harder, so it is what it is, but. Yeah, it, it's it's the way it goes. Good night, Victoria. We'll see you later. All righty. So, yeah, that's the only thing I could say was Battle of Quinta is it needs to be updated, but that's a different story. I think if it was 100 last year, I was okay with it. This year, a little much for what it is. So, let's see here. Oh, so Donald wants to know about Bush Mills. Does the 10 is a great daily sipper? I'd agree. The 16 is a fruit bomb. Yeah. The 21 year, oh, 21 year is fantastic. Yeah, I totally agree. Those accuracy are quite are quite good. Yeah. Oh, Jason, good. I'm glad your room was fine. Yeah, our room had some some weird issues. We found some things that we weren't so thrilled about. Um. Yeah, I agree. For because I see the problem is we were we were there during that concert for was it Austin City Limits? Yeah. So if it was a hundred bucks. I wouldn't really bitch, but for two hundred. It was not so great. Yeah, it was old. The old part didn't really bother. The what bothered me was the rust in the tub and the um, black things in the bed that I, I'm unaware of what they were. That's the part that I was not so thrilled with. But like you said, for 200 bucks to hang out with everybody, totally worth it. And who cares? We're just going there to sleep anyway. But it's a different story. So, you know. It was worth it to stay with everybody. That part is the best part is everybody being there, so you can't really complain. Oh, there you go. See, Kilco, you can see, use your points from the uh, the Wyndham. That works perfect. Yeah, 100 for the room and 200 to throw a party in the lobby. Okay, when you, when you put it that way, Dustin, you really can't complain. I, I guess that's true. And they did let us put it, and they did let us party all freaking night long. And they didn't bitch. I mean, really and truly, they really didn't. So we, we do have to give it to the staff for being freaking awesome. Now, we cleaned up after ourselves. There was no, there was nothing they had to clean up, which was very important to me that that was the case. It was completely cleaned. So that was the good news. So they really can't complain about that. That's for sure. So we took care of it. So it's all good. Good night, Jason. We'll see you later, bud. Like I said, we'll wrap this up in the next 18 minutes for sure. Because like I said, I got to get my kids to school on time. And it'll be that time. So Arkansas gets better, crazy allocated bourbon. Yeah, it is insane how um, how it is in Canada. <laughs> um, hot water rolls. I'm not sure who your roommate was, but your roommate sounded like he was drowning in a shallow puddle. That's not their fault. They didn't prevent it. Well, it sounds like somebody drank a little too much, but, you know, that's a different story. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's nothing wrong with as far as the hotel. The hotel itself was fine. It's just our particular room has. My wife is a. Uh, she freaks out about all this crap because she's an uh, infection preventionist at a hospital. So she's always looking the bed for bed bugs and anything. She just, and then of course she points it out to me. I wouldn't have even looked. This thing wasn't in the sheets. This thing was underneath the sheets. And so she was like freaking out about this crap. I'm like, you know what? We just live. It'll be fine. But yes, she wasn't thrilled about that. So it is, other than that, it was fine. I, we slept fine. It was all good. Everything's good. Oh yeah. She's a germaphobe. Absolutely. Especially in other hotels, but you know, it should be clean, but it is what it is. Ooh, I've not had the intermediate sherry. That sounds good, Dustin. I would love to try that one. So my next question for you, but hot butter rolls is so did your roommate vomit in the bed is my next question, or they just snored a hell of a lot. Hoping it snored and that's all it was. <laughs> High internal sterilization. Oh <laughs> lovely. Why are you going to try to beat me with your blue wrench? Looks and generally sucks here, but having the largest purchaser in Warhawk if it helps them. That's true. All I know is to get three keys. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. So the key story. Okay. So we had three keys, Captain. One of them worked. That's the part that pisses me out. Poor Victoria. I'm trying to give her her bottle back the next day. Probably stood there for 15 minutes. My wife was in the shower. And it couldn't get the stupid key to work. She gave me the damn key that doesn't work. So we had three keys, and out of them, one worked. It, it sucked. Different story. Nobody's fault. But next time, they hopefully the keys will work better. Can only hope. That is what it is. So you know. Yes, I know. I had all the whiskey in the room. I'm sorry. We had to hang out at the vault again. I wasn't going to tell Emma no. I won't go in there and serve distilleries lots of whiskey and drink some more myself. Yeah. Plus, oh, the other thing is that it was kind of screwed up, unfortunately, as I know the communication wasn't great, that half the channels made it back to the vaults again, the, second, the other half didn't, which was fine. It worked out fine. But uh, it worked out. The Viking handshakes, I don't need to touch people's hands and play the absurd squeezy squeezy game. I don't know what that means, but sure. Oh, Kling oh Klingon? Okay, I do know what that means. Sure. Whatever works for you, bud. Um, you know, it doesn't bother me, but shaking hands is part of the deal. Hugging, shaking, that's just, that's what we do in the whiskey community. There's no doubt on that at all. Ah, good times. No, I got no complaints about La Quinta. Beyond the weird things in the room, the, the food was decent. I mean, we made it down there at 9.50. We still got to eat. It's all good. Because, you know, it is what it is. Because we we had to eat. It was very, very important. I was like, especially the first night. Oh my gosh. I was like, I'm not hungry, but we have to eat before the bastards ball. We just we have to freaking eat. So we ate and all that good stuff, but I was like, oh, I can't eat anymore. So so much freaking food the night, you know, at freaking Salt Lake, let alone whatever we ate when we got back to La Quinta that night, because I know like hot butter rolls brought a bunch of freaking pizza and stuff, which is freaking awesome. Ooh, he alcohol induced apnea oh god that's not good hot butter rolls that's terrible dude yeah he should that's actually quite scary um yeah as long as he's all right you're you're good that's a little scary yeah Solek was definitely better this time because last year last year not last year last time we were in austin in april for psalm school we tried to salt lick with uh, josh and nathan and carl Owen Grant. And um, it was fine, but I was got the bison ribs. I was not that impressed with it. But this time was significantly better, the family style. So I guess if I went again, I'd probably do the family style. That was way better, for sure. So it is what it is. Ah, oh, that's good stuff. So um, he almost died from blunt force trauma. That was secondary. Um, I... Do I want to know about this? What happened in your room that there was blunt force trauma involved? Um, that's a little scary. It sounds like somebody fell down and hit their head. That sounds really, really scary, in fact. Um, hoping that didn't happen. Or is that because you wanted to beat him because of the sleep-induced apnea? It's a good question. 
oh, look, 350 bottles of Pappy came down to LCBO. Well, you know, falling down is bad. Laying down is okay as far as when you're drinking. So, you know. Holy crap, he almost sleepwalked into an ass kicking. Oh, lovely. Who was your roommate, Hot Burgles? I don't even, I'm not sure who it was. That's interesting, though. It's kind of scary at the same time. <laughs> it's a little scary. Yeah, I don't know what time we went to bed, but I know Captain didn't go to bed to like five, something crazy. So that's the scary part is I like those stay up because I guess I think I think Roy was saying on Saturday they'd prefer us just to run the whole damn hotel out. And explain to other guests that um, there's a bunch of whiskey people here, and they're, they're going to drink pretty much all night long. Hey, it's okay. It could be Chris. Poor Bourbon Insane, you know. That poor bastard. He missed things of the damn flight delay, and then his air, stupid jet bridge wouldn't work. Then he went to the vault and drank a shitload. <laughs> and went to his room. So I had his luggage with me, Scott. We took his luggage back for him in uh, Scott and Bart's truck. And uh, by the time he got back to the room, he checked in. Like, somebody helped him even check in. The poor guy couldn't even check in. Somebody helped him because he was hammered. And the poor bastard lay down on the bed, I guess, passed the hell out. It's like, that blows, Chris. That really blows. Let's see, my college roommate was at a party, and somebody hit his thumb. He'd fallen face first into a laundry machine. Ouch. I had to take him home. Stop him for two minutes to make, let him puke. Oh, God. That sounds horrible, Dustin. Oh, God. That sounds awful. Mm. No, thank you on that. That sounds crazy. Mm. Oh, well, it can be. Oh, yes, travel can be very stressful, for sure. Yeah. I like more time. I think more time with everybody would be even more fun. I mean, I know we all had a blast in the couple of days we were all there. Two or three days, everybody made it there. We did like a week convention, though, at this point. So much freaking fun. Now, granted, of all of our livers going to survive a week? Mm, different story. That's that's for sure. Okay, I'm glad to hear, Dustin, that was not you who fell face first into a laundry machine, because that really sounds bad. Trevor, why do you want to why do you want to mute Victoria for 300 seconds? Oh, no problem, Galen. It, it was a blast. And I'm glad. And your wife started to like the whiskey, which is great. What did you... <laughs> Jeez. Oh, gosh. You guys are too much. You gave her a five-minute timeout? Is that, is that what you're doing? I don't know what she did to you, Trevor. That she made her give her a five-minute timeout. <laughs> Keep this up. I'll give Victoria a freaking wrench. Mm. Oh, it's too funny. You do, Donald. Oh, Donald, you should come down here. You'd have a you'd have a blast. You know, obviously, I know this is impossible. It it's too bad they couldn't have several days of vault uh, tastings for because people want to, obviously have to pay for it. Obviously, because you know, the vault it's expensive, but it'd be worth it. I mean, the freaking vault is so freaking awesome. But her liking it was the reason I didn't make it the second night. Oh. Oh, you didn't make it the second night, Galen? I did not know. Oh, because were you taking care of her because she liked it too much on the second night? I know when we talked to you guys at like, what was it, like five or six? Whatever time we met you guys over there by the Welcome Center. Have a week and then do theme nights to limit the bottles out. Pete night, any night, Sherry night. I'm not opposed to this plan. Problem is, can you afford a week of hotel? That that and that's the only problem is, is it gets expensive quick. Who knows? All hail the blue wrench. The lift had to make a pit stop. He, oh man, Galen. Oh, that's too bad, dude. Oh. Uh, hope she's. Hopefully she. Uh, was. Well, I guess she was. I saw you guys before you guys left the second day. So I guess we were finishing breakfast or whatever when you guys left or hanging out, whatever it was. Hopefully she uh, survived that. Oh, yes. Really stay out in Texas. Oh, she gone. Damn. 
So I guess, Coco, you're going down to the uh, Austin, I guess, to pick up your bottles. That's good. You'll have a good time for sure. I'm too drunk to go bottle shopping. The hotel will be less than, normal, than my normal travel days. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, Dustin, that's funny, dude. Yeah, based on the way I know you like to spend money on bottles, you're probably right. The hotel probably will be cheaper, and you should stay drunk the whole time so you can't buy anything. It's probably a good choice for your sake. Uh, that's too funny. It's not funny. It's true. Well, only you can be the inside. You're the only one that can be in power. Oh, yes, that's funny. Um, what Canadian sounds did Brad give me? Um, I know he gave me the 11 souls from Good Having Warts. Mostly it was other scotches and Irishes and Japanese. I don't really remember. That might have been the only Canadian. I'd have to look though. I can't I'm not sure. He gave me a bunch. I can't really know. My my single favorite scotch and bourbon? I don't freaking know. It was in the damn day. You you have you wanted this uh this uh you know single favorite? Eh, depends on the day. I'll give you like top three bourbons, probably William Lee Weller, George T. Stagg, and that Pappy 20. If we just had to go as of this very moment, sure. As far as scotches go, um, Longmore 35, uh, Balvenie, Ton, Batch 3, 1509. And uh, that 45 year glove was pretty damn good too. Um, as far as Irish goes, it's the Milton Gergalish, by far that Gresnell's Tree One. That thing is freaking amazing. Oh, here she. Oh, so Galen says, um, "Here she's beside me. She's good. I could, I could have went down, but decided to hand, hang out with her because she's trying her whiskey. All my fault. We might have to make have made a breakthrough, so it was worth it." <laughs> That's so true. Oh, Dustin, no one should ever listen to either one of us when it comes to finances and whiskey. We're both dumb. Clearly. We're both dumb. No one should ever listen to what we do when it costs how much money we both, both of us idiots spend on whiskey. That's for sure. I switched my flight just to make certain I'd be there Friday night. However, I'm not in touch with Daniel at least two, so I gave him a heads up. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that tree one freaking doll is freaking unbelievable. As far as rise go... It's uh, it's Boss Hog freaking Black Prince. That's my favorite rye ever. Um, trying to think what else. Probably in the cat in the uh, Taiwanese. It's probably that Cavalan uh, Soloist uh, Sherry Cask. Um, let's see. Probably for American single malts. It's probably Balcones. Um, their regular single malt, probably my favorite standard release thing. Um, now you get there. Now, as far as like best one, it's probably their Cash Strength or um, the uh, Westland Gariana series. Holy crap! Pull out the Cavalon. Fine, you guys have four minutes. I'm going to bed. I will pull out the Cavalon just for Dustin because it's so freaking good. And we're just rambling anyway. It doesn't matter. But hey, 18 you are still listening. So I feel that good for me. That 18 people still give a crap about what we're talking about. Because, you know, it's the real whiskey nerds, you know. Victoria, it was not me. It was Captain. So you can blame you can blame him. I would never ban you. I let you say what the hell you want because but he got a blue wrench and he's abusing his power. So, you know, it is what it is. See, even Dustin wouldn't ban you. So, it's between Trevor and John. You got to take that up with. So, I don't know what to tell you. You can slap. You can slap him around tomorrow. It's all good. So, <laughs> all right. So, this is. I've had this on the show before, but everybody hasn't seen it before. So, this is the the Cavalon Sherry Cast single cask. It is fifty. Let's see here. 
It's 57.8 cast strength. Uh, yeah, see? Dusta wouldn't do it. Oh, yeah, the color on this thing. Look, I mean, look at this thing. I mean, look at that color, guys. I mean, it's... You can't even see... You can basically not see through it. It's damn near black. It's beautiful. Totally agree, Atex Vega, that I've got some barrel picks of Balcon and Single Malt in the other room that are black. I, ha I hid them from myself because I drank too many of them, and so I bought a case, but I, I had to hide. I think I drank three of them pretty quick, and so the other three are hidden in the other room. Uh, oh, that dark whiskey? So I get a bottle you want, you ain't getting shit. See, that's what happens when you ban her, guys. It's not very nice. She ain't gonna bring you shit. Um, that coffee whiskey that looked like that looked like coffee, that was Lone Elm. Ooh, a muscatel finish. Ooh, that sounds good. See, Victoria can share with me because I don't ban her. It's all your captain. It's your problem now. Oh, you killed it? Oh no. I've got a Vino Barrique that's on its way. I'm waiting. I ordered it through the concierge service, but it has, you know, it'll be here in a month or two. So I'm very, very excited. I tried some of it in, in the vault and it was freaking awesome. So I'm really excited to get that bottle. Hmm. So good. So freaking good. It's worth it, Captain. <laughs> Oh, you, it's between you two. Really? Yeah, I've not. Oh, it's not even close to the Muscatel. Really? Wow. I guess I'll see if I can find one of those then. Yeah. See? Victoria says she's got me, so it's all good. Keep it up. I'll just give her the George T. Stag. You don't get any. How's that sound? Yes, so do I, Donald. I would love to have the Triconal freaking Muscatel finish. I freaking love Muscatel to begin with. So it'd be even better to have a Triconal. And I, and I really do like the two Triconals I've got. I think they're both great. I just can't find There's just nothing else available here, and it sucks. Hmm. It's such a great whiskey. You really can't go wrong. What better way to end bourbon night than uh, on the Cavalier sherry cask? Because why not? Well, I should probably kill the stream because there's an hour of me, of me just rambling about fun stuff because why the hell not? It's always a good time. Always a good time, for sure. Um, yeah, we can go hang out on Discord if everybody wants to hang out on Discord after this. So if anyone doesn't know, we hang out over on Bill's uh, Whiskey Cord. So we, we talked to Bill, and we decided we're just going to put – instead of them making poor Steve A moderate another freaking Discord, we're just going to go hang out and use Bill's, and that's what Bill said to do anyway. So that's what we're going to do from now on. So I think we're going to go hop over onto uh, Discord on the chat. So if anybody wants to go hang out in Discord, I'm going to hop over there. And Thanks, everybody. Um, sounds like a good time. So cheers, everyone. It's been a fantastic evening. I was really glad Juliet could join us and bourbon – and this Cavalon are fantastic. So, uh, hey, you guys at Blue Wrenches, can you give give Kilco the invite to Whiskord? That'd be great. Oh, and uh, Jim, I see him here. I had not seen earlier. Jim, thanks for coming in. Thank you for the card of whiskey. Two nights, 16 hours of Lacan drinking. It was loud and perfect love Monday <laughs> night whiskey. Yes, it was. You're welcome. No problem. So, yeah. So, if anybody will put that uh, link into... Uh, the Discord, or if you want, Coco, if you go over to Bill, any of Bill's stuff, his Discord's in there. Click on that, sign up for Discord, and you can hop in there. It's the easy thing. But yeah, if you can, if anybody can put that Discord link in there, that'd be great, so that uh, anybody else that's not in there currently can jump in. So otherwise, I'll see everybody over in the Discord. All right, now everybody, cheers. <laughs>